Hello everybody, hello. Sorry about the mishap of having to disconnect and reconnect. <laughs> um, I feel like every single time I open up OBS and I try to do a live stream, there's like some kind of troubleshooting that I have to do. So anyway, I hope everyone who was part of the original round uh, is able to come back to this one which I feel bad about, but I think we should be good now. Um, morning, morning. For me, it's the afternoon, but morning for you. Hello, um, I'm so excited for this. I hope everyone is well. Yay, thank you. Happy Friday. Hey, Tina, I just bought the brushes and I don't even paint. I just might have to pick up my watercolors again. I'm an alcohol markers girly, lol. I can't wait to see this beautiful print. Yay, thank you so much, Alston. Oh my god, I've actually been told by a couple of friends who um, said that as well, that they are buying the brushes regardless of the fact that they don't paint that much so thank you so much I really appreciate that I mean I would love if you know my paintbrush set encourages people to you know like yourself pick up painting again um, could be a nice excuse oh actually it's night I just write morning oh <laughs> fair time zones are so interesting right um, for me it's one o'clock uh, in the in the day although it is so dark and gloomy outside in Toronto right now so I actually have both studio lights going right now it's very bright hopefully um, uh, yeah hopefully everything looks good I'm so excited to get these I'm into artist squash right now and I love these oh perfect I definitely made these brushes in mind for people who paint with gouache watercolors inks um, I haven't technically tested them out with regular acrylics yet but they do work with acrylic gouache which I have tried so I imagine that it's gonna be pretty much the same in terms of performance and um, yeah, so the brushes are officially um, available. So I have the link in the description if you want to pick up the brushes. They are very cute. They are in this beautiful, wow, uh, my webcam. <laughs> my webcam uh, color settings is like so oversaturated, um, but I'm sure many of you have seen my onslaught of videos with the packaging and unboxing and all that good stuff. We are going to paint, I promise. I just figured I would, uh, yeah, talk about the brushes if anyone has questions and um, wait for people to uh, get that notification for the live stream so that we can get into the painting portion of this. If you have a clean set, would you consider using it for makeup as a joke? <laughs> you know what? I actually have used paintbrushes for makeup before. I actually do have some paintbrushes that I use for makeup, but I don't know if my custom paintbrush set is quite soft enough for most makeup applications, to be honest. They're like a really good like in-between. Um, softness in terms of being able to hold like heavyweight paint like gouache uh, but as well being soft enough for something like watercolor so unfortunately they're not quite soft enough that I would want to put it on my face <laughs> but they are like the design of them would be perfect for makeup brushes in my opinion <laughs> Uh, trying to check my bank account to buy a set for me and a separate one for my friend. Oh, thank you. That's so sweet. I love the idea of, you know, you guys having matching sets. That'd be so cute. Uh, I want them uh, not just for the brushes, but the box itself looks amazing. Yay. Thank you so much. Yeah. When I was designing um, the box, the artwork for the box, I really wanted it to feel like you could reuse it for other things. And so I had that in mind because for me, I know that with paintbrush boxes like this or packaging for, um, for a lot of products, especially paintbrushes and makeup brushes, I never keep it in this, like in the set like that. I just put them in like a, like a jar or something. So I wanted the box to be still something that people would want to keep for something else later. So you can definitely use it for other things. Um, 
The back looks like this, um, which obviously is not in the thumbnail there, but it's got the two characters kind of like holding flowers towards each other's because, you know, girly, girly, girly tangs. Um, color scheme is so pretty. I'm saving up for them. A tad poor to buy them now. Oh, totally fair. I know like this time of year is a lot of people are tight on money because they're doing a lot of like holiday shopping and you know a lot of obligations to travel to visit family or whatever it is so totally understandable um i'm super excited i hope i get paid in time yay uh we have we have enough i think probably uh technically they are limited edition so there's no guarantee that they're going to be uh releasing another round of them necessarily but i feel like we we're starting out with a fair number of them so hopefully everyone who wants one can get one um i will say that i believe the special price is for the first week uh and then it will go up five dollars so if you want to save five dollars uh get them soon but how is everybody? How is everyone's Friday? What do we have planned for this weekend? I know all of my videos sort of like kinda got bombarded for the end of November. So I hope, hopefully you guys can have a fun binging um, kind of round of all my videos. I Time management is hard. So that's why they just kind of all ended up happening at the end. But let's, um, yeah, does anyone have questions for me? I guess not, cause I, I feel like I did so many videos talking about the brushes, so I feel like I probably answered a lot of things. But, um, I, before I switch over to the desk webcam or desk cam, I want to say that I received a um, beautiful and very sweet package in, the, in my P.O. box from a following. Uh, from a follower, which I'm really excited to show you guys. Um, is there a specific date that you'll stop selling the brushes? No, I don't believe so. I think basically um, we, uh, from what I remember, the Crafted Mo basically just manufactured, um, I think it's 200. I think it was 200. Um, yeah, but basically, they manufactured a certain quantity uh, and then we'll just sell them until they're sold out, um, which is why they're kind of, that's why they're limited edition. Um, and as far as I know, there's no stopping, stop sell date. Um, if, you know, if they do really, really well, um, they would entertain the idea of a re, uh, reproduction of them, but that's like, I think they have to perform or they have to like sell super well in order for that to happen. So happy got them. Yay! Yay! yay, yay. <laughs> hi! Hi! Welcome everyone. Okay. Let's switch over. Oh my god, I made it to the live stream for the first time. Oh my god, welcome! Welcome, welcome. I'm so glad. I am so happy to have any and all returning and new people come to the live stream. We have a lot of fun here, I, I have to admit. <laughs> so I hope you enjoy. Definitely feel free to bust out, you know, one of your own uh, crafts if you want to, you know, have a little crafting, drawing, art session, or you can just chill and watch, whichever. Um, okay, let's switch over to my desk now. I'm very proud of this thumbnail though. It's cute, right? Um, I mean, I didn't take the photo. This was uh, sent to me by Craftimo. <laughs> All right, so desk, desk, here we go. Okay, so again, here's the box in the back. This one is empty because I took the brushes out, um, but that's what it looks like on the inside. We had the option of going for white or black for like the insert part here. And I felt like because of the design being very pastel with like that black background or dark background, it kind of felt fitting to have that juxtaposition. And someone said um, it felt like uh, when, when you get like a wizard wand um, with the black insert, which I thought was a really cute um, comparison. Uh, 
And here are the paint brushes. These ones have been used, so that's why they are stained. Except for, actually, this one is maybe the closest to what you'll actually get, where it's white with a little pink tip on the end. But yeah, the, the writing on the side here has my little I'm a wonder and the sizes and the shapes and all that good stuff. Two filberts and then one big flat and then three rounds. Also, this, uh, <laughs> I was planning to do another um, kind of portrait study to like warm myself up before the live stream, but I ended up running out of time. But for all of my fellow 80s fans, my 18s, I, uh, this is a, yeah, we've got Mingi, we've got Hong Jun, we've got Songwa, we've got San over here. They just had their comeback today. So the, like the new music video dropped at midnight Canadian time or Eastern time. I, uh, <laughs> I watched it right at midnight. I saw the thumbnail and it was like, post it 40 seconds ago. I was <laughs> so proud. <laughs> okay. So what I wanted to show you guys as well. I got a package in the mail um, in my PO box from a follower. They gave me a little handwritten note. I don't wanna, I don't know if I should show it. So um, anyways, this was like such a surprise. I was not expecting to, yeah, receive like a gift from one of you in my PO box uh, when I went yesterday. So I don't know if Danny is here, but thank you so much, Danny, for sending me some amazing goodies and for your really, really sweet note. This is their business card, um, beautiful business card. I love the uh, kind of like watercolor paper texture here. And so this is their artwork. They have given me a bunch of really, really cute stickers. I'm obsessed with this ghosty going home to the alien mothership. So cute. These little fishies. I love the way that the the artist does the eyelashes on these characters. Like it's super spiky. Very, very cute. And amazing handmade watercolor paper um, made from, let's see, yes, uh, made, handmade watercolor paper one out of 100% uh, recycled paper trash. Incredible. Absolutely love, 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 love that. I think handmade watercolor paper is so cool. I actually bought handmade watercolor paper from um, this like brand in Australia and I made a YouTube video painting on it and I have not painted on any of the other sheets of paper since. <laughs> so this is actually perfect because I feel like this is the... Yeah, as soon as I opened this yesterday, I was like, I have to paint on this for the live stream. It's like, yeah, look how gorgeous 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 like stunning colors I love all the little speckles also this color scheme is so immaculate like look at this have you ever seen a more perfect color palette for me like the blue the purple the pinks like they go with the paintbrushes so well hello amazing So pretty and yeah they sell um, yeah I haven't gone to check out the shop yet but I imagine they probably have full sheets of this beautiful handmade watercolor paper and as well as their artwork their stickers they looks like they have um, this I'm assuming is Lionel block prints which look at the little chicks so sweet this one's beautiful too. I obviously love any kind of celestial vibe. So anyway, shout out to Danny. This is so sweet. Thank you so much. I'm absolutely in love with this handmade watercolor paper. It's stunning. Let me, where did their business card go? Okay. So. 
I can try and keep their business card in the frame here. Oh my god, that handmade watercolor paper is lovely. I've been wanting to try making it so bad. So fun for printmaking. Yes, oh my gosh. It's such a fascinating um, process. I've watched uh, people, I've seen people make uh, handmade watercolor paper just like on uh, like YouTube videos and stuff. And I love, I just like love the idea of reusing scraps um, that otherwise would just get thrown out. And yeah, it just creates like such an unique you know beautiful thing and um the, the the brand that i had bought the other paper from before uh oh they're called dodgy paper i believe um for those of you who follow sophie mcpike um you'll probably have seen her use it before but dodgy um they they have some papers where they use yeah like old flyers or comic books and stuff and so it's really cool when you can see like bits of the comic and the illustrations like in the paper um which is just like a really really fun like extra touch i just want to stop by and say hi i think you are so dope i love your lives i draw along with you on my tv oh thank you welcome hi and that makes me so happy i'm glad i also always forget that people watch me on their tv which is Particularly when like I'm on camera, I'm always like, oh my gosh, I'm on people's TV like in like such a large scale <laughs> Which is I don't know why I don't um, Think about that because I watch YouTube on my TV all the time, but anyway So I'm gonna put this aside Because I think You know, there's there is some pressure about painting on this beautiful handmade watercolor paper. So I think just to be safe, I want to start with these smaller sheets first. I mean, I say first, I don't know how far, I don't know how much um, painting we're gonna get done today, but. Oh, also, okay, one more thing before we start, getting, <laughs> before we start painting, I also wanna mention. Um, I saved that, but I'm probably going to need to sketch first, actually. But the other thing that I wanted to mention, when I was doing some organizing of my merchandise in my studio and stuff, I found these old coloring books. I have been selling or I've been offering this coloring book as like a PDF to purchase on my Gumroad, which I don't advertise very much because this coloring book is very old. I think it's from 2016, 17 or something. Um, so yeah, it's, it's very old, but I forgot that I had, or I didn't realize that I had a few more copies of this, uh, five in total. I think I might've set these aside because they're slightly misprinted or like imperfect. So actually, yeah, you can see this one, there's like some kind of speckled printing on the edge there and just like, so I think these were like C grade, B grade, whatever. Um, anyway, so I'm not as like, mm, what's the word? Like these are so old that I, I'm not really interested in properly selling them anymore, but I decided since, you know, it is December and it's the holidays, I think what I'm going to do is for my $14 patrons who already receive, um, mail from me, I think what I'm going to do is I'll do like a random randomized giveaway for, um, five, uh, lucky patrons. And then I'll just send this out with their December patron Patreon reward. So it's only December 1st. So we have, you, you have all month to either upgrade to the highest uh, tier, or if you want to join, um, that's yeah, that's like a little extra incentive and a little bonus uh, holiday gift from me for uh, five lucky patrons. So I forgot I bought the PDF. I'll need to see where I saved the file. Oh, yay. Well, I hope you enjoy, um, getting around to coloring in the, the coloring uh, pages if you get around to that. Yeah, they were all inspired by like Grimm's Brothers fairy tale book uh, uh, stories. I have been thinking about this for many years of like revisiting these illustrations and redoing them like in full because I never actually colored them or anything like that. Um, 
they just lived as like these line drawings. So anyway, that's that. Actually, should we open it up and look at it? Let me look at it. Let me look at it with you guys. It's got my really, really old business card in here too. <laughs> the information is probably wrong now. So... I like barely remember half of these um, stories, but the girl without hands, this is an interesting one. This one, I mean, all the Grimm's Brothers stories are uh, like a tiny bit morbid. Um, I remembered this one was such a tedious task to do all the line art for all the cabbages. Oh my gosh. And by the way, this was all done traditionally. These were not digital. So I drew every single cabbage <laughs> like you can kind of see actually if you look really really closely at the printout I think you can kind of see the red cola race pencil underneath because I traditionally did these um with like fine liners whereas if I did it digitally I could have just copied and pasted um all these cabbages <laughs> the six swans I remember this story I think a girl's family gets turned into swans or her brothers get turned into swans or something like that the white snake I don't really remember this one too much I think something to do with uh, a king having to eat a snake or something <laughs> the golden bird little red cap aka little red riding hood snow white and Rose Red, which is a different story from Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. The Juniper Tree. I remember really liking this one. I like the the different kind of um, textures. Hansel and Gretel. The Owl brother and sister another human getting turned into an animal common for Grimm's brothers <laughs> trope I guess Rapunzel she definitely looks like Rapunzel from Tangled like the Disney's Tangled for sure the riddling tail and last little Snow White and this is the one that you guys are probably familiar with in terms of the story uh, Snow White and the Seven Doors I do remember really liking this motif. I definitely want to revisit this. I liked the idea of kind of this like bird's eye view um, perspective of her in the coffin. I do like that. Anyway, so if you join my Patreon page in the $14 tier, you can uh, potentially win a coloring book from me as well as get your print and sticker from me. at the scene here with my supplies I will do I think I will do some I will do this a sketch on these first just because I don't trust myself to freestyle paint <laughs> grab all of my supplies and I will be right back.
Thank you, Alston. <laughs> Sorry. Um, what was I saying? Yes, um, I just bought the paintbrushes. So excited. Thank you so much for buying them. Um, so my plan is that I wanted to have, you know, I didn't want to go in completely blind on these uh, watercolor papers. So these were a sticker design uh, set that I did for Patreon back in February. So I thought it'd be fun to use these characters like as inspiration. Um, maybe we can hopefully get around to two portraits, um, two cute little portraits, uh, maybe, maybe not. But I would love for you guys to vote in on who do we want to draw first? Do we want to do our little bunny character or do we want to do our cat? So let me know in the comments. Hello, hello, welcome, welcome. And I'm thinking, I feel like, ooh, cat is winning. Cat is definitely winning. <laughs> Easily. Wow. Okay. We get, we like a little spicy, don't we? She's a little bit spicy. Cat reminds me of Kyo. He goes last. LOL. Just kidding, cat. <laughs> Kyo is so mischievous. This paper would be perfect for Kyo from Fruits Baskets, right? Cat is definitely the winner. All right. That was an easy sweep. Um, yes, I think the paper colors here too is kind of perfect. I think this will be perfect for the bunny. And then we'll use this one for the cat. Husky. <laughs> I don't think I've ever drawn a husky before. All right. Let me zoom you in. I guess this side makes more sense because this one has more, there's like a texture there. So let's go with this. The thing about this, uh, about handmade watercolor is it's so textured that I'm very worried about erasing too much. So I'm going to try and be as careful as possible. But if you've uh, seen me sketch before, you'll know that I do a lot of erasing <laughs> normally. I'm going to try my best and I'm going to try and, you know, be very gentle. So apologies if you can't really see the sketch very well. I can't wait to get your brushes. Just bought them. Also, your line drawings translate so well for coloring. Would you do another coloring book again? Yay, thanks so much for getting the brushes. Um, would I do another coloring book? I, I'm not sure, to be honest, because I... I mean, not that I have had any experience that I know about with my previous one, but I do worry about people... I'm not saying you obviously, but just in general, like people using it, like using my, my line drawings for resell in some way. Like if they like used it to create an illustration and then they like sold the prints of it later or something like that, you know, like it is a risk that you kind of just have to make with your audience. Um, I know that's definitely the case when people sell digital goods as well, but never say never. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll feel differently about it in the future. Hey, so glad to catch a live stream. Yay. Thank you. Welcome. We're drawing a cat. Well, not a cat, but a human cat. <laughs> a human character with a cat hat. <laughs> but yeah, someone else had asked about a coloring book as well, um, in a recent YouTube video. I'm not sure if it was the same person, but, um, very understandable. Um, I will definitely give it some thought, but for now, not at the moment.
Hello, hello, welcome. Actually, yes. Well, I guess maybe I should have, should I have the paintbrushes like in frame? There you go. <laughs> that is, that is the goal for today's live stream. We must show off the brushes. I've got some handmade tea stained watercolor paper that looks and feels just amazing, but I have noticed that erasing mistakes on it is so unforgiving. Ah, yeah. Also, tea stained watercolor paper sounds beautiful as well. I wonder, yeah, I guess it's just when the watercolor paper is comes in contact with like a non-traditional media, it just behaves differently. But yeah, that's why, I mean, thankfully, I mean, I don't know if you've, oh yeah, even a needable eraser, you, it, it's actually like picking up the paper fibers. So I might actually have to not erase much, to be honest, I might just have to. But yeah, if you don't have one already, I recommend a needable eraser, uh, just in general, because it's a little bit more gentle on paper surfaces, but obviously, as we just saw, not immune. I'm so happy you're alive. I finished all of my classwork and have to crochet in order for a classmate. Your timing is amazing. Oh my gosh, amazing. I love that. Happy to keep you company while you crochet. If you don't mind, what are you crocheting? That's very, very cool. I very much admire people who do any kind of knit work. I think obviously tr uh, crochet and knitting is like especially trendy right now, but I think that being able to make your own clothes or accessories at, in any capacity is amazing. So I love that. Crocheted items is so cute. Love the rainbow tips on your new brushes. Oh, thank you. These actually, I didn't even notice that. That's technically, technically they're actually all stained with watercolors that I had used before. Um, technically they're actually all tipped with pink when you buy them. Um, so they're white with like a pink tip, but a rainbow tip selection would have been also amazing. Um, this is actually just, yeah, cause I used them. <laughs> Forty-eight brush sets sold. Oh my god! Yay! Thank you. Thanks for the update, and also thank you so much for everyone who bought one. That's that's actually amazing. Um, for the first like forty-five minutes, that's like a brush a minute. <laughs> so glad that I caught this live. Did you watch Seventeen's Mama acceptance speech? I nearly cried when Sungwon talked about Moonbin. Oh my god! I've. Uh, I haven't watched like all of Mama, but I've seen I've seen the clips from the speech, um, and then I've also seen like a number of performances from Mama. But oh my gosh, yeah, someone like choking up about uh, Moonbin was so like heartbreaking, but also so sweet. And then uh, Wanu was also like holding back tears um, as well. I think he was probably thinking about his mom. I'm just <sighs> I'm so proud of them. They deserved it. They really did. So basically what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to like closely use my original sketch as a reference, but then I think we're going to add extra design elements. We're going to make it really, really uh, cutesy. I want to buy the brushes ASAP, but I'm a broke college student. Aw, I feel you. I totally understand. It's definitely, you know, not in everybody's budget to be buying new paintbrushes right now. Um, but I will say that for me, I 
find that my paintbrushes last a really, really long time. Like the Craftimo brand specifically, like they had sent me their bamboo brush set, like probably two or three years ago, I think. And I still use those brushes and I use them all the time. Like if you, uh, you know, if you want receipts, so to speak, um, if you like go, if you scroll back, through my YouTube videos from the past two years at least, I'm almost positive that I'm using the Craftimo paintbrushes every single time. And they, and I, I, I was only sent one set, um, like the original like run of them, the, the bamboo ones. And yeah, they're super, super durable. Um, and so for me, like I know that the price point of the brushes are is not for everybody, but I do think that it is a great investment so long as, you know, you take care, good care of them, but totally understandable. But I just wanted to, you know, vouch for the longevity, longevity of them. Maybe I convinced my mom to buy them for Christmas. Ooh, yes, I think they'll make a great holiday gift for sure. Um, or birthday gift or just, you know, treat yourself. But yeah, to me, I think art supplies is a great... I don't think it's it's uh, too hard to convince people because you get to make beautiful artwork with them. I drop some not so subtle hints to her then. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, I also dabble in the cozy hobby side of YouTube and they recommended me of the Country Kitchen Charm coloring book. That sounds adorable. Um, oh my god, I hadn't thought about people passing that off as their own work. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that most people wouldn't. I think a lot of people like yourself are just genuinely uh, interested in the, yeah, like the more hobby side of it. Um, and just like, yeah, just wanting to, to have like a fun creative outlet. But unfortunately, some people would take advantage of it. But I appreciate um, the suggestion. I'll definitely keep it in mind. Hey y'all, hi Tina, hi, welcome. Hope you've been well. Does anyone else have this problem where you set out a certain size for your portrait and then as you work, it just gets bigger and bigger? I never not run into that problem. <laughs> Um, is there a cool tone red that you can recommend? Because I'm trying to find a good tone red for um, what kind of medium are you using? I'm honestly, do I even have a cool tone red? I'm gonna be using gouache today, acrylic gouache. I think my reds are warm. I think the reds that I have are warm actually. Yeah, Scarlet, that's warm. That's a warm red. And then this is like a fluorescent red, so that's... Hmm. I don't know if I can help you out. Uh, LOL, I'm hoping to get these brushes as a Christmas gift for myself because Mama needs to treat herself. Absolutely! I am here for treating yourself all year round, but definitely for the holidays. Unless I put guidelines on the top and bottom, that same thing happens all the time, <laughs> right? I don't know what it is. I'm amazed that this is centered, uh, at least. <laughs> I mean, probably because it's like a front on portrait. I have the opposite problem actually. Oh, really? I mean, either way, we have problems. At least I think if you're having the opposite problem, at least you're not running out of paper. <laughs> That's my worry is like when I get too close to the edges. Quinacridone red. Oh yes, good call. Quinacridone red is a good call. Uh, while watching this on break from art class. Oh my God, yay, amazing. Um. Yes, I cannot fit a whole character on one page. Oh, I'm drawing the regrets as teenagers and I'm struggling. Oh my God, I love that so much. I actually recently bought a Rugrats sweater the other, uh, um, not too long ago and it's so cute. It has the giant T-Rex on it. I love the Rugrats, that's so fun. 
I put both your brush set and acrylic wash on my birthday, uh, birth miss wish list. We yay! Also, happy early birthday to everyone who's born in December around the holidays. I imagine that is kind of tough, right? Because everyone's like busy doing holiday stuff and they don't have time to celebrate your birthday with you. Are you doing November monthly faves too? I want to. I'm worried if I have time to do two live streams this month, but I will try. Um, that's actually, that's very nice of you to ask because I was wondering, I was like, is people, are people going to want a second live stream? Um, since I'm already doing this one, but if you, if you guys want it, I'll try and make it happen. I feel like her face is still too big for the size of the hat. I think it's cuter for the face or the head to be bigger. This is the original sketch. Yeah, I feel like her, I didn't give enough room for her do I erase the face? Hmm, dilemmas. I don't wanna, yeah, I want enough room around her, so we're gonna, we're gonna sacrifice the face. I should use my other kneadable eraser. This is gonna get like all filled up with um, <laughs> paper fibers. Time to draw! Yay! First time catching a live! Oh my god! Amazing! Welcome! Um, I hope you enjoy. Cool reds include alizarin crimson, prim, uh, permanent alizarin crimson hue, spectrum crimson. Oh! Jeanette! Shout out to Jeanette for all of the helpful cool reds. Thank you so much. I love quinacridone rose. I would consider that one like, that's almost to me, I, I, when I think of quinacridone rose, I think of like it basically is pink, but it is true that I guess if uh, in terms of red, it is technically like a very cool red. Uh, my birthday is next Saturday and my sister's is the Saturday after that, exactly six years and one week apart. Oh, that's amazing. Do you guys do, do you guys do a joint birthday celebration? I always enjoy the save live streams and rewatch them every time I draw, so I for sure will enjoy this one too. Yay! Thanks so much! I'm glad. Honestly, like, I'm so happy that you you guys like my live streams because I really like doing them. Uh, I think live streams are just so much fun. And it's all because you guys are so fun. Um, I think from here I'm gonna have to come I'll just have to commit because I don't want to erase too much more it's hard to see but I think So normally when I draw portraits, I draw the nose first, but I think in the case of this style where it's like a little bit more simplified and um, more kind of shoujo-esque, I think I'm probably better off drawing the eyes first. I think the eyes are definitely kind of the focal point and they're so big that it, I think it actually makes more sense to draw the eyes first. I'll, I'll remember that for next time if we get around to the other character. And then we gotta draw her spiked collar. Super fun. This community is pretty nice, like a warm hug. Aww, I agree. We do sometimes have joint birthday gatherings, yes. Um, I don't have that one yet. Thanks for the recommendation. I always appreciate how you save me from endless scrolling and search for something to listen to as work. <laughs> Amazing. I love that. Yeah, my live streams end up always being like three, four hours long. So it definitely serves as a good chunk of time to just like set away. So I'm glad. <laughs> 
if you if you really like long form content with like to be background noise if you like a little bit of chaos and pop culture i highly recommend mike's mike uh like mike's as in like a name mike as in like microphone he is so funny and entertaining and he does these like super long form videos um breaking down his favorite tv shows and movies he's done um he's he just released the third season breakdown for gossip girl he's done pretty little liars he's done glee he's working on lost and like i don't even know half of these tv shows but for some reason i just he's so entertaining um that i get invested in his retelling anyways <laughs> Like of all this, of all the series that he's covered, like these like long form TV show ones, I've only seen Glee and then I've seen like the first season of Gossip Girl, but so entertaining. Um, it makes for like great company in the background. Also, I read it the face, but I think it's the same, um, to be honest. <laughs> I think I might just have to partially wing it with painting. And the beauty of uh, my medium of choice today, acrylic gouache, it is, um, opaque so we might end up just having to free freehand some of this and just roll with it Um, I have to leave soon. Just picked up your brushes. Merry Christmas to me. Bye all. Happy holidays. Oh my god, happy holidays and Merry Christmas to you. Thank you so much for like all of your lovely comments all the time and uh, for picking up the brushes. I hope you have a good day or evening. Thank you for the recommendations. Uh, yes, I love, I love that we can all just like collectively help each other, especially when I am stumped on... Uh, on something so I appreciate appreciate you guys um, my parents were usually good about our birthdays there was maybe only one or two years when our presents were also our Christmas gifts but that was because it was a huge gift like a game console yes that is true that is the benefit of uh, birthday birthdays near the holidays is that you can sometimes get like a big a big gift um, like a that makes it really worth it and I'm glad to hear that your parents were like good about making you guys feel um, like your birthdays were still being celebrated. Hello, Tina. How are you? My birthday is on Christmas Day and I want to get your brush set as a gift for myself. Yay! Well, I hope that you're able to do that and I hope that you enjoy. Okay. It is time. I think it is time, friends. I'm gonna... It's gonna be... I think it's definitely going to be uh, a lot of freehanding, to be honest. But at least we have something to start. Uh, hello, Tina. Joining here from my work. Hope it's not so cold. Uh, yes, um, it is. Oh my god, it's snowing. Wow. I mean, yeah, we had the first... Uh, Toronto uh, season snowfall earlier this week, Tuesday, and um, now it's snowing again. Wow. Um, but because it's so dreary and like dark out today, even though it's like the afternoon, um, I have both of my studio lights on and I have slippers on and like my uh, my cozy sweatpants. So I actually feel maybe slightly overheated to be honest. Mostly I think the lights. So thank you so much though. I think I'm, sorry, I'm having difficulties opening my um, my palette up here. So for those of you who have been watching my acrylic wash videos, you'll know that I am now a lover of the um, like stay wet palettes, which I've linked in the description. They, I literally started this palette in January. Isn't that crazy? I've managed to use it all year. Um, I just like keep adding more paint and warm water onto it. I mean, it did kind of dry out a little bit. So you can see some of the paints had dried out and then plasticized and then whatever, I don't know. Um, but for today's purposes, I think I'm just gonna reuse whatever's going on here and then add more paints as we go. Cause 
I hate wasting paint. So if I can, if I can use it up still, I'm going to do it. I uh, just got myself a lovely set of brushes and also I am now a patron. I've been meaning to for so long now. I've loved your work and it's been so helpful. Thank you so much. Aww. I hope you enjoy all of the extra content on Patreon. Um, yeah, there's, I mean, depending on what tier you joined, if you joined uh, $3, you get all my podcasts. There's like, I think a year's worth of podcasts now. Um, and then if you join the $5, I have two years worth of extra YouTube videos. Um, and if you joined the, the physical rewards, I hope you enjoy those too. Either way, even if it was $2, I appreciate, I appreciate it. Um, it doesn't snow very often where I live, but December usually means tornado season. Oh my gosh, that sounds scary. Okay. Let's, okay, I guess I always start out with skin tone first. I think, let's see. what makes sense so I just try to find a spot on my palette here so either we can maybe start here and then we can use this color for blush so our gaoli is pale so I'm gonna use this pale peach both you and my husband have convinced me that I need a stay wet palette for myself I mean they're pretty amazing, especially uh, for, yeah, like acrylics and acrylic gouache because they dry so fast, which drives me crazy. But like, I want it to dry fast when I'm actually painting, but I don't want it to dry fast on the palette. Before anyone asks, this is just water. This is literally tap water in a bottle. I use it to add water to my, my paint because it's easier. He uses his palette for his Warhammer paints. Yes, it is very, very popular for, for that. Um, so yeah, but definitely valid for just regular artists as well. I was like, originally when, when you said that um, your husband was convincing you, I was like, just use his. But then I realized you can't because it's yeah different paint and he's got his own colors going and mixed and stuff. So obviously that wouldn't actually work. It's not shareable. <laughs> Definitely got that Stay Wet palette. You can use parchment paper for the new palette paper instead of theirs. Oh, good hot tip. All right, we're going in. We're going in. Honestly. We're, we're gonna lose the sketch like entirely probably, but it makes me feel a little bit at ease either way to have something. Yeah, we're just gonna, it's fine. I think in hindsight, I should have just put paint down and then we'll probably end up doing the sketch again. Oh, hydration reminder, friends. I just remembered. The one thing about painting portraits on the handmade watercolor paper is because the paper is so textured, it does kind of create like a weird look for the skin because <laughs> it's like very, very textured, but that's okay. I don't mind it for, I think for things where it's a little bit more of a simple simple portrait character.
my shopping list grows every time you stream at Stay Wet Palette. <laughs> I apologize for enabling your, um, your art supply spending, but buying art supplies, honestly, most of the time, I don't feel that bad about it anymore because, I mean, especially for me, because I, uh, this is literally my job, um, is being an artist, but also, yeah, like, I think that with art supplies, it's being put towards creation of a new thing, which I think is amazing, as opposed to, um, other types of, you know, spending habits i'm i've been very very bad and i've been doing a lot of um shopping in general for things that i definitely don't need um but we we're allowed to treat ourselves we work hard we're allowed to treat ourselves lol yeah no kidding it's all stuff i will probably uh, actually use though yeah exactly exactly I do <laughs> it does take me a while to get around to some things that I buy just because I have so much of it um there there is you know there obviously is uh, a limit and there can be some excess I suppose but I will get to it eventually like a lot of the art supplies that I bought when I was in Japan which already I can't believe how fast this year has flown by like I bought that stuff in April at the beginning of April for my from uh, Japan, my Japan trip, and I still haven't used most of it. <laughs> but I will, I promise, I promise. Okay, this looks terrifying, but... Uh, oh no, spending money on things that make you happy, how terrible. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I agree, I agree. Um, yeah, there's like a, a TikTok audio going around with that sentiment. I'm here for that. Okay, so now we're gonna mix in. This is like a very warm color, but let's see how I feel about it. Ooh, ooh, she fluorescent. Okay, I don't know if it reads on camera necessarily, but ooh, wow, very vibrant. I love fluorescent paint. Oh my gosh, it is so fun. The only downside though is it's so hard to reproduce in print. Like it's just impossible basically. Like when I want to make a print out of it or a sticker, it just doesn't scan and doesn't print the same way because you just can't replicate it. But it's so hard to resist. That's the same with the glitter gouache. Like I'm obsessed with using the glitter gouache, but I can't, I can't make the glitter happen for prints. I mean, technically, there's like, um, sometimes, not glitter, but you can do prints with like special finishes on them, but that's like an extra cost. I'm starting to buy all the art stuff I've always wanted to have, but I have almost no time for art. Aw, well... Art will never leave you though. You'll you'll have uh, it'll be there for you. So if not now, eventually you'll get around to it. That's kind of how I'm looking at my uh, a lot of my art supplies that I've bought, especially the ones as I was saying from Japan. That like yes, it's been like several months since I've gone around to using them, but you know they're not going to go bad. Um, Technically, the, the, you do run the risk with acrylic wash. It can dry out over time, but so long as the lids are like sealed um, or like really tightly on, they stay um, usable for like many, many years. So, but most art supplies don't go bad. This looks so terrifying. This, I'll have to do the eyes next because this is so scary looking. <laughs> uh, I like to use palette paper on a wet sponge or a microfiber chamois. Works in a pinch. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, and then you just put it in a Tupperware. Yeah, I, I've seen a lot of people talk about making their own 
kind of version of um, the Stay Wet palette, which is amazing. I love that. Money can't buy you happiness is a lie told by wealthy plus privileged people. Remember that, kids. <laughs> Money buys me happiness in the form of food and games. Honestly, I always make that joke too when people are like, money can't buy you happiness. And I'm like, they're using their money wrong. Um, <laughs> or the other, you know, the more realistic quote, I guess, is money can't buy you happiness, uh, but it, it doesn't hurt or it definitely helps, you know? Uh, being comfortable is like key. Um, and um, obviously, so long as you are using it in a way that makes you happy, then yeah, I'm here for it. I'm here for it. Not us encouraging our spending habits. <laughs> okay, I'm just like guessing the nose will be somewhere around here, so we're gonna do that. Money buys me happiness in the form of sketchbooks and watercolor paint. Oh, amazing. All good things. Oh my gosh, speaking of, I recently had just like the most luck I've ever had at a thrift store the other day. I went to Value Village for my fellow Canadian. I think Value Village is a Canadian thing, right? Um, but basically it's a thrift store and um, my friend and I went and I was amazed at how many good things I found. Normally, like, I when I do go thrifting, I find like one or two things. But this time around, I came home with 12 different items, which is crazy. But because it's a thrift store uh, and also it was like they were having a Black Friday sale. So I got 30% off on top of like the already like very affordable items. So I'm like amazed and also it was such a good haul that I'm like, I should do some kind of thrift haul. But at the same time, I'm like, my YouTube channel is, you know, not a thrift haul channel. So I'm just like, what do you guys think? Would you guys be interested in something like that? Should I like, I'm trying to find a way to incorporate that somewhere in my YouTube channel. Maybe like if I do another winter vlog or something, I don't know. Thrift haul. <laughs> um, just treated myself to a paintbrush set. Oh my God, they're so beautiful. I can't wait. Yay. Having money literally means my basic needs are met. What do you mean? Yeah. Um, heavy on the sketchbooks. I buy so many and never use them because they look so pretty. I also have a lot of sketchbooks. I'm guilty of that too. Food, shelter, clothes, healthcare, all cost money. Exactly, exactly. Money got me so much happiness yesterday. I went feral and bought myself 42 pro markers on Christmas gifts, as Christmas gifts. The pro markers are so nice. The Brinzer Newton ones, right? That's a good choice. I really like those uh, markers. I don't use them that much because I'm always working with Ohuhu. Um, but I, I love Ohuhu so for reals. But the... Um, yeah, the pro markers are really nice. Fellow resale store enthusiast. Yes, variety channel, quick and sweet. Yeah, thrift haul and then draw the outfits maybe. Yeah, right? Of course, let us see your haul. Would love fashion haul videos. Your style is so cute. Yay, thanks guys. Oh, you're so nice. You're so good to me. Fashion and thrift items totally tie in with your art. Uh, the markers were on huge sale, basically a quarter of the price. Oh, totally worth it. 100% worth it. I'm making, um, I'm making like a light purple for the eye, the, the whites of the eyes. Although I just realized, <laughs> just realized the paper is purple. I'm like, basically, <laughs> I just made the, almost the same color as the paper. <laughs> Uh, that's really funny actually. Okay. In that case, I need to make a lighter color than the paper. 
I'm not used to painting on um, like a toned paper like this. Uh, yes, yeah, so Ohuhu had a discount for Black Friday and couldn't help to treat myself. Yes, we stand Ohuhu in this household. I love Ohuhu. Um, not only their products, but I also just love working with them. I think I've said this before, but they're honestly one of my favorite companies to work with. They're just so chill and easy and I like their products. It's a, it's a win-win. So basically what I'm doing is I'm painting the bottom part and then leaving the top part left uh, out because um, I like to do like a little shadow right on the top right under the lash line. So I feel like the, the paper color is kind of perfect for that already. So I'm just doing the, the bottom part of the uh, eye, I guess. But we're not doing, we're not using white because that's a little bit too harsh. So I'm just using like a, a very light purple basically. And then we'll do the iris and then we'll do the You're building the base for the eyes. Yes, exactly. <laughs> They're getting there. She's she's looking really weird, but we'll 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 figure it out. I finally uh, got out of that once. I learned that watercolor paper can go bad. I started just having fun filling the page with paint splashes and drawing on top. Wait, yeah, I'm with Kai. Watercolor paper can go bad. I had no idea. What? Can so can can we elaborate? I am concerned. I have a lot of watercolor paper. <laughs> Um, did you make the watercolor paper? I didn't. Um, it was very, very kindly sent to me by Danny. Um, I they literally just like, it was a surprise package in my PO box yesterday. So shout out to Danny. This is their, um, Etsy page and their, I don't know. Yeah. The, uh, and then their info. Uh, but yeah, they so kindly sent me their handmade watercolor paper and like their stickers and stuff. So yeah, I was like, Oh, this is perfect. I must, I must use it in the live stream. Oh yes. Okay. Correct. I'm like, I used to work at an art supply store. I should know this information. Um, I guess maybe I, it, 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 it escaped my brain because I use like high quality, like really, really high, like I use artist grade supplies now but um yeah that's why when you buy watercolor paper when you buy sketchbooks and paper and stuff you got to look for acid free or archive archival and that <laughs> sorry i just burped um and that is what you're looking for in order for it not to um go bad or for it to have longevity sizing the gelatin not the acid. yes okay thank you for everyone's yes thank you for the input everyone but yeah when you're buying supplies when you're buying it look for acid free or look for archival then it won't go bad <laughs> or it will take a really, really long time <laughs> okay next i think if i'm remembering correctly her eyes are just like a dark purple Ooh, let me just double check though Oh, I didn't. Oh, I forgot. Not nah, see, this is why it's good to reference yourself. Um, they're like a red. Um, I see to match the yeah, just to get that like match the hat. Okay, yes. I forgot. All right, put this over here. You learn something new every day. Oh yes, yes, yes. I love the crowdsourcing friends. So helpful. Mm, let's see, what color? I'm just like 
Oh yeah, let me show you guys what I'm doing. I'm sort of just like mixing colors that are already on the palette because, you know, I think basically I won't go for red red. I'll go for like a muted like reddish, like a reddish brown. Pure red would be a little bit demonic and we don't want that. But this looks about right, probably. Bye everyone. Hope you have a good day. Oh, thank you. Hope you do too. Thanks for coming. Okay, let's get these eyeballs in. So I'm using the number four Filbert. It's good for like getting more flat applications with gouache. And then we'll use a round, like a small round brush to get more details in. <laughs> it's, so, it's so spooky looking. <laughs> Neon pastel red pink, right? Oh my gosh, yeah, I'm obsessed. This like, this mixture over here, wow. Yeah, it even looks kind of crazy on the camera. Um, that is this one, mostly. This Turner's um, Lumi, Lumi Red, Fluorescent Red. Obsessed. But it's like so hard to capture on camera and print. So I need to stop, or I think I tried to stop using it for a little bit because I was like disappointed when I tried to uh, make prints. Filbert brushes are amazing, aren't they? I love Filbert brushes. I find they're like especially crucial for me when I'm painting portraits with gouache. So yeah, that's why I wanted to include them in my set. So now we're gonna use this number three round. And we're gonna fill in more of the iris here. And then before I do the actual lash line, I think I'm gonna do more of the painting around this face. Looks scary, but... <laughs> You know, we gotta trust the process. <laughs> uh, I put both Turner's Pastel and Luminescent Colors on my Birthmas list. Ooh, yay! I don't know if you saw my most recent video slash sketchbook page. Not to like encourage more things to put on your list, but... And I don't know if you're into this kind of thing, but the Glitter Gouache by Turner's is also kind of amazing. Um, I used it in my most recent video. Uh, yeah, there... Oh, no! So two videos ago, I, I posted two videos like back to back, but um, yeah, the clear diamond and then the gold, oh, it's so fun, so much fun. I mean, glitter glue probably functions the same, but yeah, it's very fun. Uh, popping in to say congrats on the launch, Tina. Thank you so much. I don't know if you saw my reply to you, but um, they do ship within the United States, so. Uh, the sizing goes bad. Basically, if you buy a paper in shrink wrap, don't open it until you know you're actually going to use it, which is why I'm actually uh, actively trying to fill up my work in progress sketchbooks. Uh, the Lame gouache, when I saw you use that, I lost my mind. <laughs> Isn't it amazing? I like, I literally have had it for years um, and I just keep forgetting I have it. I think maybe just um, kind of similar to what I was saying before about how like fluorescents are really hard to capture when you make prints um, of them. That might be a, like a, a large portion why, portion why I don't use the glitter gouache that much because it's just not gonna replicate the same when I make it into a print or a sticker or something, but it's, oh, it is so much fun. So basically I'm just giving her some like fun eye makeup basically. And then we'll do the actual like lash line after the fact, cause it'll go on top. Mm -hmm. 
and then actually with the gouache I might be able to just sort of roughly map out where I want her nose to be since we lost it in the sketching part Glitter gouache, huh? Adds to shopping lists. <laughs> it's snowing in Tio. Are you seeing snow in downtown? Yes, I am seeing the snow. It's kind of, kind of magical. I'm not gonna lie. While we're like hanging out, being all cozy with our paints inside, I thankfully um, have enough food in my apartment so I don't have to leave today. <laughs> so that's the beauty of when it's snowing and you don't have to go outside. <laughs> and you just can like, it's very scenic. I wish I could show you, but. Uh, yeah, it is, it is, uh, very cute. It looks very wet, though, today. It's, like, very light, so I think, I don't think it's gonna stick. I saw the pearlescent and glitter gouache on Jerry's, um, Artorama, but I think I'm gonna pass on those maybe another time. Totally understandable. You gotta be choosy. I understand. But for future reference. <laughs> Can't you add it after the fact to a print? I could. That is very true. I could do like, um, I could add it on after the fact. It would be very time consuming. I would definitely have to like increase the price if I wanted to do that because it would be tedious to, to hand paint all the prints. But that could be like an option if I want to do like a special edition run or something. I'm back, gonna make cake and chill with you all. Oh my god, I love that. What are you what kind of cake are you making? Me and my sister are going to watch Wish today. So we're going soon. Aw, enjoy watching Wish. I still have a bottle of Windsor Newton Shimmer Medium, so that's no issue for me. Ooh, shimmer medium. That sounds fun. I bought it on clearance at Michael's almost 10 years ago. Oh my god, that's amazing. And it still like looks like it'll work. That's awesome. I'm telling you, art supplies, they last a long time. Okay, button nose, little cute little button nose, and then let's do her figure out where her mouth is gonna be. Cake. <laughs> There is something just, for all my, especially my K-pop stands. there is something just so funny to me when we talk about like a K-pop idol's booty and we refer to it as cake, as a whole bakery if you will. <laughs> I just, I don't know why, it just tickles me, I just think it's so funny. My mom ate my leftover Thanksgiving pound cake and I haven't been the same. Oh no, that's so sad. Aww. Well, more cake to be had. Just think about, now you have an excuse to get more cake. A different cake. Oh, the beauty of living alone. Chef's kiss, I don't have anyone eating my food. <laughs> Someone else eating your cake you were saving is another level of heartbreak. <laughs> Yeah, I got really lucky in that regard when I did have roommates or like when I lived with family. Um, I never ran into that issue. I feel like we were all very respectful of each other. I've heard many, many stories of people um, running into the issue of like roommates eating their food. Or like roommates, friends or partners or someone eating their food. That would drive me absolutely insane. Like that is the, that is like top tier disrespect. Oh, her face is a little bit lopsided, actually. Let me fix. I always do this. I always draw 
Like I love doing front on portraits, but they're always slightly lopsided. <laughs> Golden butter and brownie cookies. Oh my god, that sounds so good. Are you excited for Christmas or nah? Hold on, let me fix our camera here. Um, this might sound a little bit depressing, but I actually, so, I mean, maybe it's not that depressing. Um, so normally every Christmas I go back to my hometown and I stay with my mom and see my family. And it's not, it's not usually like a really big deal. Like we're not like huge Christmas people. Um, like we technically do celebrate Christmas, but like we usually just like have dinner together, exchange a couple gifts and then uh, watch Netflix basically. But this year, um, so my mom lives with like my aunt and her partner and um, he has he has daughters who have like full families, like kids and husbands and all that stuff. And basically I got a text from my mom uh, a couple weeks ago and she was like, so we're going to be hosting a lot of people this year, so it might be best if you find some friends to celebrate Christmas with. <laughs> so she was basically, she basically just told me like, yeah, there's no room for you. Don't come. <laughs> um, which I was like, oh, okay. See you another time then. <laughs> which is just so funny to me because I literally never go, go to my hometown. Uh, like I go maybe twice a year at most and one of those times is Christmas so damn mama <laughs> I know it's fine it's fine like I'm literally seeing her tomorrow um like she's gonna come up to Toronto and have dinner with or no have lunch with my sister and I and we'll do groceries um so I'm still seeing her this month but yeah <laughs> I will not be celebrating Christmas with family this year. Um, again, I'm not like a big Christmas person anyway. I'm more of a Halloween gal personally. So like Halloween is my peak holiday of the year, which has new, has come and gone now. So the rest of the year is like whatever. Girl, same. <laughs> Not gonna lie, working in retail low-key killed my enthusiasm for Christmas. Yes. Um, I talked about this in my previous podcast on Patreon. I had like, I have a segment on my podcast um, titled Hot Takes. And the whole hot take was uh, basically just me saying why uh, Halloween is the superior holiday to Christmas. Um, <laughs> I had, I had a whole list. It was an essay, okay. Um, but anyway. I am actually going to be like, I don't know about Christmas day specifically, but I am going to be hanging out with a friend like during kind of the holiday, like right around the holidays. Cause she's not really doing anything with her family either. Um, and you know, everyone else is going to be busy. So we're going to, we're going to hang out. I don't know what we're going to do. Maybe we'll just like watch K-pop stuff and bake. I don't know. Um, so anyway, don't worry guys. I'm not going to be like entirely by myself on during the holidays. Like, who cares about Xmas? <laughs> Dang, sorry. But on the other hand, at least you won't have to awkwardly be placed between someone else's family. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, I think that's kind of like when I was, I was um, explaining it to my friend, she was like, it sounds like your mom's kind of like doing you a favor in a way, like uh, in terms of like not being forced to yeah just like be in an awkward situation because I do genuinely think that um, I would probably just prefer to be a 
at, at home, like, or like in my own apartment as opposed to dealing with that. Um, and yeah, I agree. I used to work retail for many years. So I think that is a huge part of why I'm like very, um, new, like not super enthusiastic about Christmas. Cause there is something about working retail, but especially during the holidays that just it kills something in your soul. <laughs> uh, what kind of paper is this? Oh yes, this is handmade watercolor paper that was sent to me by Danny. This is their Etsy shop. So beautiful, very, very cool. Um, yeah, it's literally handmade from like scraps of trash. <laughs> of like scraps of other paper drinking stream on christmas tina you can always start up a stream if you're bored on xmas i love that we all have the same brain cell because i literally thought about that i was like there is got to be lots of other people who are not doing anything on christmas or are going to be bored or like want company so i have been considering that i have been considering doing a christmas stream drinking on Christmas as well like a drinking Christmas stream sounds actually impeccable I didn't think of that but I love that idea actually <laughs> that would be really fun I'm very fun drunk or tipsy um obviously drink responsibly everybody and you know but I'm when I drink I'm like just like a heightened version of myself so I'm like really bubbly a little bit chaotic but I'm, I'm yeah I think that'd be fun. <laughs> How about going to a new place for Christmas? I see the thing is my mom actually, it's funny. My mom actually suggested that in her text messages to me. She's like, Oh, like you could go traveling with friends. Um, and I did actually like propose that to my friend, but then we realized that like a lot of people do that for the holidays and so we would be surrounded by like other families on holiday and also because of that the prices are a little bit expensive um because a lot of other people are traveling so we're like you know what let's just we'll save it for another time like traveling wise um so yes but we did think of that we did The history behind Christmas is fascinating. I like the aesthetic. It's the capitalist brain rot plus being an adult that ruined it for me. Yeah, totally. Oh yeah, when I was a kid, I loved Christmas. I loved it. Like opening the presents, being off school, like winter activities, like obsessed. Um, but yeah, adulthood has uh, adulthood and retail and obligations and you know expectations has. I worked at a mall in marketing for four years and I hate Christmas for that reason too. Mall Christmas trees give me anxiety. <laughs> I wish Christmas wasn't so steeped in consumerism. I know, right? Which is kind of ironic because we were earlier talking about like money buys me this kind of happiness, but like Christmas is another beast in and of itself. I wish you could get your brushes. I love the pink tips. Um, even knowing they'll get stained. Aww. I'm glad that you like the aesthetic of them. I understand that, you know, it's like not in everyone's budget or whatnot, but I'm glad that uh, you guys enjoy them. This is actually turning out so cute so far. Hello. I'm excited. I didn't, I didn't really know what to expect like painting live because I haven't painted live in a really long time. Um, but she cute, she cute. So, uh, famous last words, hopefully not. Um, so yeah, Halloween is the superior holiday. Amen. I made it to a live stream. Hi, hello, welcome. Girl, I would run away from family table to watch your stream. <laughs> oh my God, I love that, thank you. <laughs> Take a shot every time somebody in chat says Merry Christmas, y'all. I would die. Y'all would kill me. <laughs> what a way to go though, honestly. Oof, when I drink, I just walk into furniture even more than I usually do. Aw. <laughs> You'll just have to wear like a Michelin man, like suit or like knee pads. 
I would love to see that. Hello, how are you? Sorry I'm late. I really wanted to be here from the start. I took a walk because I wasn't feeling good, feeling a bit better now. Oh, don't apologize. Taking a walk to feel better, that is priority, 100%. Um, I'm glad to have you here now. That's all that matters. Okay, are we gonna, are we gonna risk uh, adding in some purple again? I think we're gonna do it because we just want like an, ad an added dimension, right? So let's do corners of the mouth and then like the lip line. And then underneath. Yes. You guys are really hyping me up for the idea of a Christmas live stream. I might have to do it. Well, including drinking. Like drinking during the live stream. That would be so fun. Does your breast set uh, is gonna have international shipping? It does, yes. Um, I don't know all of the countries that Craftimo ships to, uh, but definitely they do offer international shipping for sure. Oh my gosh, she's so cute! Penny is looking good, Tina. Not me transferring the video from my iPad to my cell phone. LOL. Y'all is coming to the gym with me? Oh my god! Yes! This is... This will count as my uh, trip to the gym for the day. <laughs> also, also, you're so funny. I love... I love the dedication. Thank you. I love that we can keep you company while you go to the gym. While we all just like sit on our asses and, and draw and chat about random stuff. <laughs> I'll be there. Oh my God. Okay. I feel like, okay. I, I'm not going to confirm 100% that I'm going to do a live stream for Christmas, but I'm going to say right now that I'm heavily considering it and I definitely will announce it as soon as I know for sure. What should I drink? What would be the drink? Something, something, not eggnog, not nothing like that. Um, maybe, I'm like, I'm so cliche. I definitely prefer like fruity drinks that don't really taste like alcohol. <laughs> Hard cider, ooh yeah, I do like cider. Cider would be good. You guys should really like the stream. It increases happiness 100%. <laughs> Guaranteed. <laughs> Guaranteed happiness for all. I was about to say eggnog. <laughs> eggnog? Okay. I'm I'm a hater for no re no real reason cuz I've actually never had eggnog, but I the idea of it sounds really uh, off-putting to me. I love eggs, but the idea of drinking it just mm, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> she. I hope I don't ruin this because I think she's turning out really cute. Some like flavored soju. <gasps> Cinnamony, ooh. Yay, Christmas live stream. I love soju. I love flavored soju. I actually have two different flavored sojus in my fridge as we speak. Maybe that would be smart, because I already have it. I have uh, citra, citron, which is like lemon basically, and I have like the yogurt one. The like, uh, yakult. You call uh, soju. It, oh, it's so good. <laughs> I'm doodling along in my ugly sketchbook, the one I draw in when I don't film videos. Amazing, amazing. I love hearing people draw and paint along or any other craft. Someone's baking right now. Love it. Baking, crocheting. So many creative people. We're, you guys are so cool. Let's go. <laughs> And yeah, making it a drinking game, that would be pretty funny too. Uh, 
I have to do a painting for my psychology class and it's due tomorrow and I only uh, got one vague rough sketch. Wish me luck. Good luck, good luck. I just finished this page spread with 20 portraits. That's 20 more than I've done the entire year. Congratulations! You should be very proud. That is amazing. Good job. I do kind of taste like sweet nog. I do kind of like the taste sweet nog. <laughs> Not for everyone. Coquito. Eggnog, you can't change my mind. Oh, coquito over eggnog. My uncle likes eggnog. That's enough for me to know that I won't like it. To be fair, it tastes nothing like egg to me. Growing up, I thought it was a name like pineapple originally where it doesn't actually have the thing from the name and I have never even con I never even thought about the fact that pineapple has like the word apple in it you're so right <laughs> in Florida we do coquito still raw eggs though um coquito coconut milk plus rum oh kind of pina colada e some people include but I guess can leave it out so maybe a good option then I'd love to say boricuas bo boricuas I'm probably saying all these things so wrong. I'm so sorry. Um, don't use egg. Oh, can y'all recommend me a cool Disney character to draw? Ooh, cool Disney characters. Uh, do we want a villain? Do we want a hero? Do we want an animal? Um, there's so many. There's so many choices. The first character that come to my, my mind is Melissa Maleficent because I think she just has such a cool character design. Maleficent, yes, same brain cell. <laughs> Preferably human, yes, 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 okay. Valid, valid. I'm in that boat too. You know what's so crazy though? Like, I used to draw like Lion King characters when I was a wee, wee one. Because I was obsessed. I mean, Lion King is still one of my favorites. But it's just interesting to me that I used to almost exclusively draw animals, where now I almost exclusively draw humans. Okay. Let's... Actually, just for funsies, I'm gonna leave the lashes for now, because that's like the best part. So let's leave the best for last. Or not last, but later. Um, so next, I'm gonna paint the... Oh, she's turning out way cuter than my original version of her. <laughs> That's funny. That's fine. Um, let's do, yeah, let's do the hat. We'll do the hat part. Actually, I also wanted to do like fun, um, like additional design elements. So maybe I'll do that as well. Like little stars and shapes and stuff. Eh. I am using acrylic wash, so we can do that later, honestly. So, the next thing is we gotta mix up a bunch of paints, or... Eh, let's just wing it. Oh, hydration reminder, everybody. Yay, Maleficent! I almost exclusively draw monster girls or furries, best of both worlds. Oh yeah, a hybrid, if you will. Lion King 2, Kovu, need I say more? It's so true. Kovu was, I think, a lot of children's uh, awakenings, if you will. <laughs> there was just something, they were, they were on something when they were animating and voicing and all that stuff for that character, like, hello? But for me, I'm not gonna lie, I mean, I, I did have the hots for Kobu as a child, but for me, before that was the rock, like the Fox Robin Hood from Disney. 
he was so charming and charismatic and like, you know, he walked so Aladdin could run. <laughs> Do Twisted Wonderland characters count as Disney because they have cool designs? Ooh, I love Alice in Wonderland vibes. Always. Okay. Now let's paint this little hat. Hot. Robin Hood. Yes, Robin Hood was a childhood fave and crush, right? Oh my goodness. Now I'm using the larger filbert, the number eight, and this is like the godsend for large kind of flat areas like this. It was very important that I had something like this included in the set. And what's amazing is like you can use it both ways, like you can use it on its edge like I just did now for like smaller kind of more precise things, but then on the flat side you get like really good coverage. And that's the thing about gouache or like heavier mediums is you want to be able to get like more uniform flat areas so this is perfect for that disney was on something with their animal characters <laughs> honestly i had a crush on Ch trixie from fairly odd parents that's so cute. I love that. I loved Fairly Odd Parents for uh it was just so fun. Oh my gosh, my eye just twitched like crazy. Oh. Oops. How did I, I think it just goes all the way around, right? Let me see. Yes. Oh, okay. It all goes the way around and then it tucks. I had it tuck under the, into the collar. I see, I see. And then that bled into my crushes on Fox McCloud and Crystal later on. <laughs> Bise bisexual panic. <laughs> My favorite Robin Hood story was always Hook with Robin Williams. Oh my god, so good. Ugh, aww, Robin Williams. My eye twitches when I draw a lot too. Quick question, do you call your art drawings or paintings or what? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's probably like, uh, because we're like concentrating. Um, I, I guess I do both. Um, I guess for me, when I think drawing, I think um, if it was used with, like if it's just pencil or like dry media, that's what to me I consider a drawing. Like if it was graphite, colored pencil, um, even like fine liners, I would consider a drawing. And then a painting is when I've actually used paint. Um, so I think that's how I usually differentiate. Uh, and then the catch all is illustration. Um, I think that's probably the most common word that I use for my work um, or yeah, work, work, art, illustration. I think those are like more broad terms if you want to be, you know, if you want to get more technical. Tina, hi, I got my pastel witch print. I'm so excited. I'm painting on a thrifty, thrif, thrif, uh, thrifting and frame to put it uh, by my Keurig. Oh my God. Yay. Oh my God. I love that so much. Thank you for buying the print. Um, yeah. For anyone who doesn't know, my shop is open. I know that I haven't like advertised it super well, but my shop is open. Um, and uh, yeah, I love, I love that. Uh, I love hearing about people thrift stuff and like thrift flip, you know, like painting the thrifted frame. That's so fun. What color are you painting the frame? 
Um, I have to go. I'm having problems with my internet. It was nice to be here for a moment. Aw, thanks for coming. Sorry about your internet. Um, we will be here if, uh, if your connection gets better or the stream will be up later for you to watch. So thanks for joining. I just drew a bunch of cute girls so Maleficent is not looking evil enough. <laughs> I mean, maybe this is pre-evil. Pre-evil Maleficent. Your brushes are beautiful, not just brushes, the packaging is more than beautiful. I would definitely buy them if I wasn't poor. Aw, thanks for the nice sweet words. I totally get it. We're all, we're all struggling with um, prioritizing what to buy. I get it. No hard feelings at all. Wait, what is that pink paint? It's so pretty and bright. I know, right? Um, it is mainly this Turner's Acrylic Gouache Fluorescent Red, Lumi Red. Um, most, most of it, yeah. I think it, some of it's like mixed in with a little bit of white, but yeah, generally that's what we're using. It's crazy. Oh, I always do that. I always do that. I always accidentally dip my hand in there when it's still wet. But I do need, or I do want to mix in a slightly darker color. So that this part is a little bit. I think I'll mix it with. Hold on, let me show you. So it's over here on the palette, but I think what I'll do is mix in probably this. Have you heard of the queer coding of Disney villains? It's so real. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, definitely. I mean, villains in general, um, especially like animated ones from our childhood are all, mo most are very queer coded for sure. Um, I think I'd heard that particularly with Disney, I think one of the, like the main animators um, or character designers was queer themselves. So I think that's part of it. But also then there's also that narrative of um, like people villainizing queer people. Um, so it is like a kind of, there's like two sides to the conversation, I guess. But let's be real. The villains are always way more interesting in general, like character design, story, But yeah, particularly, um, Ursula was based off of, was it Divine? I know it's like a, 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 a drag queen for sure that the character design was based off of, which was a missed opportunity for the live action Little Mermaid. I haven't even seen it. Um, and I'm, I, I heard that people really liked Melissa McCarthy um, in the role, but I feel like they, it would have been Cool if they actually cast a drag queen for that role. My dream frame is thrifting a vintage gold frame, but I'll be good with a simple black one to match my house and that will make the print pop even more. Ooh, yay. I love black with pastels, so I'm here for it. Do you have any tips for approaching larger formats, say 11 by 14 or bigger? I usually print, uh, paint small, but want to branch out. I have trouble filling the space. Um, yes, I feel you on that because I also tend to paint on the smaller side too. Um, hmm. In terms of tips for that, what can I? What tips can I provide? Um, I guess. If you're having trouble filling out the space, um, potentially think about, or an option What I that I really like uh, right now is adding a border. I think a, like a decorative border is really fun. Um, or um, just like, yeah, like more design elements, treating it almost like a poster in a way. 
or you can just scale your normal illustrations bigger as well like even if you're you know used to a portrait this big just make this portrait like this like you know big bigger um and with that you'll you'll be able to paint way more details as um and uh for some people, it actually ends up feeling easier to paint bigger because um, you're not fussing like with teeny little details like this. That's why Disney villains is best dressed. Absolutely, 100%. Way more interesting character designs. That's why, um, yeah, when uh, we were asked to suggest a Disney character to draw. I was like, Maleficent, because she's so cool. Jafar really wanted Aladdin. That's it, that's all, full stop. <laughs> I mean, can we blame him? We Like when I saw Aladdin, I would, I would be like, yeah, I want that too. Um, <laughs> I bet he wished Aladdin kissed him instead of Jasmine. <laughs> I've tried watching the live action Little Mermaid, but can't get past Flounder and Sebastian looking realistic and talking. Yes. I think that's like a big part of why the live action ones are just a little odd for me is the animals. Cause they're just like not nearly as expressive and it's just like the uncanny valley of it all. It's just weird. That's why like, yeah, I didn't even bother to watch Lion King, even though like Lion King is one of my favorites, and Beyonce and Donald Glover, I was like, whoa, that's like a stacked ta cast. Um, and I was like, the soundtrack probably sounds amazing, but like, it's not even live action. It's all animated, just to look real, and that's weird. So, I, I feel like I talk about this all the time, um, about why I'm like, just not a live action Disney person, <laughs> uh, or like the remakes anyway, but I digress. That's definitely the, one of the main points for sure. The movie had some good aspects, but in general it was kind of bad, especially the singing animals were so bad in comparison to the original. Yeah, so cute, I'm loving the colors also. Hi, hi, thank you so much. Yeah, I'm really enjoying how they look with this purple paper for sure. Using a bigger brush to fill in bigger spaces. Ooh, yeah, yeah, definitely. There were some things I like in the live action adaptation of The Little Mermaid, but not nearly enough to justify these things existing. <laughs> yeah. Any other human character recommendations? Ooh, everyone give Visual Mind more human character recommendations. I've drawn and painted Dragon Maleficent before. Ooh, very cool. Do you have a favorite Disney villain? <gasps> Hades. Hades from uh, uh, Hercules. He is, he is everyone's sassy best friend. This the lie where he's like, he's a guy. <laughs> it's just like accurate. <laughs> Hercules is criminally, criminally underrated. So good. I came to see you at Comic Con Montreal during the summer. I loved meeting you. Oh my god! <gasps> Thanks for coming by. Oh my God. I am like, I love going to conventions and meeting you guys. It's so, ugh, everyone is always so sweet. Um, which speaking of, uh, this is a perfect segue to let you guys know that I, I'm going to be doing Emerald City Comic Con in Seattle. I have never done a convention outside of Canada before. So... Ta -da! Um, I've paid for my table. I've bought my flight. A hotel has been booked. So like it, if, if for whatever reason it doesn't happen, I'll be devastated. But like, yeah, uh, I'm so excited to meet some of you. If any of you are going to be there. <laughs> Uh, 
Uh, I felt the same way about the mermaid movie, but was afraid of hurting my sister's feelings. I know some, like a lot of people really loved it. Um, and I don't ever want to take that away from them, which by the way, anyone in the chat right now who like loves, loves the live action Disney movies, you are absolutely allowed to love them. Um, no judgment, but it's just not for me. Uh, <laughs> I think a lot of it is I'm just like, I'm just like a firm animated believer. So not that I only exclusively watch animated things, but animation as a medium just works better in a lot of way, in a lot of certain scenarios. The singing in her head because she couldn't talk was so cringe. Oh no! They did that? Oh no. I did Oh no. <laughs> Hades was also a cool villain. Yes. Yes. Have you ever tried to make your own paper and paint on that? I would love to, but I'm scared the paper won't take anything. Yeah. I, I recognize that um, in order to make your own paper, it's kind of a process. And I don't know if I'm prepared for that process. Um, but I am very thankful to have been sent um, this this watercolor paper so that I can try. Um, it would be cool though, because I definitely have a lot of like scrap pieces of paper that would be awesome to like use up for something. Particularly business cards. I have a whole bunch of old business cards that I just can't use anymore. So I think that would be really really cool. Maybe I'll mm, maybe I'll try eventually. I just don't have the like equipment for it. The live, the live action Lion King was so boring and creepy. You're right about the Uncanny Valley. Also, I vote for Ursula to be drawn. Mmm. Good vote, good vote. I'm sorry, I did not like the remake of Little Mermaid. Jafar in the Aladdin remake was... <laughs> Hat. Uh, my fave remake villain so far is Cruella. Emma Stone is awesome. Oh yeah, the Cruella one. It was interesting when they announced that because I was like, we are, we're making a movie about a puppy killer. Um, but I actually kind of enjoyed that one too. Like it was entertaining. And I think what worked about it is that it's like no talking animals and it's not a musical and it was like a completely new story. I think those ones work better than the ones that are trying to like do something like cl really close to the original. Um, same with like the Maleficent movies, like those ones I find, again, it's just like a, a retelling or like it's a diff it's like a new story basically, so. Um, I can't wait to order your brushes. Yay, I'm glad, I'm glad. Order, I recommend ordering them within the first week, like within the week, next, within this coming week. Does that make sense? Because uh, then they're going to go up $5. Oh, when are you going to Seattle? It's going to be end of February, I think, is when uh, Emerald City Comic Con is. Literally any humanoid Disney villain. <laughs> We're on the villain train. I love it. Oh, that's so cool. Congrats. Thank you. I did love Eric in the live action, though, which I wasn't expecting. He got recast a couple of times, right? Like, originally it was supposed to be Harry Styles, which is really interesting. But I'm glad that you liked him. No, I wish I would have known. I love Emerald City. Dang. Oh no! Aww. <laughs> I like the live action Jungle Book, but I was in middle school when I saw that, so opinion could change. I agree. Uh, I also liked the, the... I remember thinking I liked the Jungle Book uh, as well, but like similarly, I it's been a long time since I saw it, so I'm not really sure how I feel about it now. I was a lot older than middle school, though, when I saw that, because I am... old. <laughs> Emma Stone's accent was really good. I liked the movie a lot. Oh yeah, I remember thinking, I was like, ooh, am I gonna be distracted by this? Cause we're just so familiar with how she normally talks, but I think she did a good job too. Hi Tina, have you watched Blue Eye Samurai? Oh my God, hi Chanel. Oh my God, um, I haven't watched it yet, but I it's like be, being very rec uh, highly recommended to me on Netflix and it looks amazing. So I definitely want to watch it soon. Um, what did you think of it? Um, did you watch it in... Because I'm not sure, is it originally Japanese or is it originally in English? Because I keep getting both, uh, like in the little snippet or whatever, the little ad. Okay, so this character's hair is typically purple. Like I have done it in purple, but I have 
so much dark blue colored mixture here from my previous painting so I think I'm just gonna use that for the sake of like you know not wasting my paints as opposed to like putting down more because it's still there's just so much of it so we're just gonna go with that um, it frust me, frustrates me that Disney puts all their stock in these remakes to check off their diversity boxes but less let most of their animated films with characters of color flop yes yes I feel very strongly about this as well. Um, I was so mad about Princess in the Frog um, being like they were, you know, going back to 2D style animation and they were finally having a black princess, but then she was a frog for most of it. I was so mad. And then like when you look at movie, like a movie like Soul, he was like a blob or whatever for most of the movie. Ugh, I have a lot of thoughts about this. Um, <laughs> or even turning red, like I, I loved turning red. Don't get me wrong. Um, that was like a that was that one wasn't as egregious because she wasn't a, a red panda for most of the movie. Like in Princess and the Frog was um, as she was a frog. But it's just like what is what is this what is this what is this what is this pattern what is this? Turning red, the red was the only exception. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, my mother is actually called Ursula LOL, so I guess I'll do Ursula next. Amazing. All I can say is my mom lives up to her name. Oh, I love that. Wait, is that bad? Wait, is your mom like fabulous and sassy or is she <laughs> villainous? Um, <laughs> I'm finding a lot of villain stories being told have sad backstories to grow into a villain and I want a chaotic evil for the fun of it without a sad story. Mmm, that's valid. That's valid. I guess because like usually people want to ground the villain so that they're relatable because they're like the protagonist. That's kind of, uh, I see why that's the angle. And just to like just to try to find a justification for uh, why they turned out that way. But I understand what you mean. I really liked the movie Turning Red and got roasted for saying so. I don't mind though, I still like it. What? I can't believe that anyone didn't love Turning Red. Or like, well, okay, no. That, I, I, let's rewind that. I find it surprising that people felt so strongly about disliking Turning Red. Like, I thought it was a great movie. I thought it was super cute. Um, I liked that they went like, they were doing something a little bit different uh, with its like very obvious anime influence. Um, and it was set in Toronto, which, you know, obviously as a person who lives in Toronto, I, I loved seeing that and like the, you know, just, and the representation of what it actually is like to be a feral 13 year old. Like I had so many people message me being like, Tina, have you seen Turning Red? This is basically you. And I was like, you're not wrong because there was so many parts about it, which like I, it really resonated with me. Um, and um, yeah, it makes me sad that like people were given it hate. Um, Cause like Disney has been doing the same thing for so long. It was so refreshing for it to do something a little bit different. And like, yeah, teen, like tweens, especially tween girls, we cringy, we so cringy. Um, like the, the level of fangirling, accurate <laughs> hey you're not old because i'm really old because then i'm really old you're right you're right you're right right i'm just kidding we're we're not old we're not <laughs> how much is your brush set will you sell them without the box later to make them more affordable maybe unfortunately um the brushes are being sold exclusively with Craftimo. Um, so I unfortunately have no control over um, like selling them without the box. So that I believe will not be possible. Um, they are currently 55 USD, but they are definitely like, um, I was mentioning this earlier, how my my other Craftimo brushes, I've had them for like many years and I use them all the time. So they've lasted me for um, two, two plus years and they're still going strong. So I understand that it's like a higher price point for some people, but 
definitely an investment and they'll last you a long time if you take care of them. Yes, it's so good. It's in English by a Japanese American. Ah, okay. Animation is beautiful. Mulan vibes with adult themes. Oh my God. You're definitely selling it to me, Chanel. Absolutely. So did, actually, one more question. Did you watch it in Japanese or did you watch it in English? I enjoy the live action Little Mermaid, but the animated movies are always better. I had a lot of criticisms like the animals, but it grew on me to be honest. I want more 2D animated movies back. Yes. She's not fabulous and sassy, so. Oh no, I'm sorry. Aw. Can you draw Anya from Spy Family? Oh, I've drawn her before, actually. Um, it's in my sketchbook. It's actually the, the it was kind of bad. Um, so maybe I should draw her again. Um, but I, yeah, Spy Family is so freaking cute. I haven't actually kept up with it for a little bit, but I should, I should watch it again or watch more of it um, for a, a nice little pick me up later. I'm having a great time. Don't, don't get it twisted. Fit made it seem like I was not having a good time. I had a great time. Soul is a mixed bag. I love the ideas it was trying to convey. Very refreshing and different. Just some creative choices held held it back. Yeah, I agree. I felt the same. Like I really liked the theme that it was portraying a lot. I think it was yeah, like it was just really relatable and something that has not been explored before. Um, in, in especially Disney movies and just, yeah, just that kind of topic. But, um, and I, I actually related to it a lot. The idea of like, when you have a dream and you think that like achieving that dream or that goal, um, is going to like make you infinitely happy and solve all your problems. But when you do reach that goal, you're like, wait, what's next? And also it's like kind of anticlimactic. That's kind of, I feel about being a full-time artist, um, that like, yeah, I thought, oh, when I become a full-time artist, that's when I'm going to be really happy. That's when I'm going to be accomplished and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And, like, I do feel all those things, but, like, there's still more life to live. And it's never going to be perfect. And you're never going to be, like, fully fulfilled by that one thing. So I really liked all those sentiments. But, yeah, there was just, it just, there was things about it that weren't perfect. Uh, Turning Red and Nimona were really cool. Oh my god, Nimona! I finally watched it, guys! I finally watched it! It was cute! I liked it. Um, my partner and I- oh my gosh, the chat is popping off. Uh, my partner and I watched Turning Red together and he said the most unrealistic part of the movie was how many stars you can see in Toronto! <laughs> accurate, accurate. Too much light pollution. Um, I'm black so I can say this. It's like Disney has never met a black person. That's all I'm gonna say. By the way, the shows that helped you develop your art style was really cool on Instagram. Thank you so much. And also, that is so very sad um, about um, the portrayal of black people in Disney um, from your point of view. That's really depressing. But hopefully, you know, we're, we're... Maybe they just... I mean, not maybe. They should just hire more people that uh, can actually portray their characters. Just a thought. Um, <laughs> yes, I love their portrayal of tween girls. It was accurate, for real, red, turning red. And I think the reason why it was so resonant and accurate was because the, the director or the creative um, team were women and like uh, Domi, wait, no, what was her name? Um, the director of Turning Red, like she, that was, it was coming from experience. Like she was a tween growing up in Toronto. <laughs> Soul was a concept I thought perhaps they would build off of. Yeah, this will stay up. Did they launch? Are we counting down? Oh, the brushes have launched. They're up. They're ready. They're ready for your purchasing. We are going on Disney tangents. <laughs> oh my God, guys, it's snowing. My first day, snow day. Grew up in Arizona and moved to, uh, Boas. Oh, I don't know how to pronounce that. Uh, woke up to snow and it's coming down beautifully. Yay, I'm glad that you can enjoy some snow. That's so exciting. I love Spy Family. So cute, right? I watched it in English. Okay, okay. 
Voice acting by Maya Erskine. Erskine? Erskine is excellent. Okay, thank you, Chanel. I will definitely, definitely watch it very soon. Maybe tonight. I've been rewatching, I've been like going back and forth rewatching Gilmore Girls and Avatar The Last Airbender, so it might be time for me to watch something new. Um, okay, I will watch it. I'll watch it in English then, since it's like originally, like it is an English made, English speaking made production. Yeah. Um, girl, have you watched JJK? Last week's episode broke me. I'm scared to watch today because I know what happens and don't want it to be confirmed via animation. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I'm like, I'm like three, maybe like three episodes behind. Um, cause I'm, I'm watching JJK right now with my friend and she and I get together like every other week. So, I mean, I've been spoiled from ages ago, unfortunately for the fate of like, you know, everyone's anime husband uh and i'm also not ready i'm like I, I need to like i'm just not i'm not ready um <laughs> i yeah even knowing the spoilers i'm not ready but jujutsu kaisen is so freaking good right now oh my god i mean i've loved it since the beginning um but it's oh my god the stakes the stakes are high Cute. Now she doesn't look terrifying. People were only people were only vocal about disliking Turning Red because how dare a Chinese Canadian woman make a story inspired by her life experiences and have it resonate with so many former cringy tweets. Yeah, they just mad that they're not us. I think the girl in Wish stays human the whole time. Okay, improvement. Good, good, good. Improvements. Please hit that like button. It helps our girl out. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. It does. I'm still waiting for a cute sapphic Disney movie, but it'll probably never happen. I would love that. Unfortunately, I'm not sure when or if that day will come, but I would love that also. You know what they should do? They should do an animated version of Wicked and cut Fierro out or have Fierro in it, but then have Glinda and uh, Alphaba end up together. <laughs> That's my proposal. <laughs> Boy Z. Oh yes, okay, thank you. <laughs> what kind of paper are you painting on? This is handmade paper by Danny that sent to me um, in my P.O. box. Very, very kind of them to send this to me. I w it was a very fun surprise um, to, to receive. It's so fun, right? Yeah, made from scrap paper. So cool. I need to food. Oh my god, go get food! We'll be here. I'm not going anywhere. Not yet. I want to finish this. The JJK manga is breaking me. Oh, I can only imagine. I can't. I was reading it. I was reading it. And then literally like, yeah, when they got into, when they were, when they trapped uh, Gojo, I was like, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> Aw, watching anime with family is fun. Uh... I have finally started watching Naruto with my husband. Oh my gosh. That is quite the task. I recommend personally, I personally recommend watching like, yeah, Naruto or Bleach without fillers. Um, the way that I do it is I just find, I think it's, it's I think it's called Anime List or something um, where they compile a list um, and, sh and let you know what episodes are filler and what are canon to the manga. Personally, I just find it a much more efficient watch um, for those older, like long, long series shonen series because the the amount of filler is just insane. Um, <laughs> that's just, but that's my personal thing. I know some people actually do really enjoy the the filler stuff. So to each their own. But that's just me. Wicked. Yes, I read the book and loved it. I need to read it again. I had the book and I tried to read it, but. Uh, I just, I don't know, it was, it started off so dry, and then I went and saw the musical, and I'm obsessed. 
<laughs> Do you think Turning Red should have had a theatrical release? It was fantastic. I wish it had a theatrical release. That would have been great. I think because it was during COVID, right? So I think that's kind of challenging um, when it's like, do we wait to release it so I can have a theatrical release or do we just not? I don't know. Um, I think it would have been great if it did though. Um, haha, about to make pancakes with y'all's company. Ooh, yay. What kind of pancakes? Are they just like regular pancakes? Are we adding chocolate chips, blueberries? What's going on? Did you watch new Hunger Games movie or do you plan on watching it? I don't know if you're into Hunger Games. I love the Hunger Games. Um, I, <laughs> I love, I watched, uh, I've seen the trilogy and then, or you know what I mean? Um, and I read the books when I was in high school or high school, I think it was high school, high school or uh, college or whatever it was. College? I think it was college actually. Um, love, love. Um, I haven't read the new book yet, but I do want to see the movie. I actually, I think I'm going to go watch it maybe next, next week, um, on like cheap Tuesday. I actually had bought movie tickets to see, uh, I'm going to see the Beyonce movie, <laughs> the like Beyonce concert movie on Sunday with my friends. I don't have silver to wear, but I'm going to wear silver jewelry and silver accessories to compensate. Um, so that'll be really fun. And I just bought tickets to watch the new Ghibli movie, um, The Boy and the Heron. So I'm going to be seeing that on Monday. So lots of movies, lots of movies, but I will go see the Hunger Games one soon, soon, soon. How old were you when you discovered you had a passion for art? I was 12, I think. Like that's like the proper age when I was like, yeah, when I like started to become really passionate about art. Like everyone, I was like into art for a long time, um, like casually, but yeah, 12 was when I was like, oh, I really, really like making art. Waffle, I think I'll, waffles and eggs. Ooh, oh, waffle savory is also really good. What do you do in your free time? I do a lot of thrifting with my friend. We like to go thrift shopping. Very fun, very time consuming, but so fun. Um, I was talking earlier about how I'm considering doing some kind of thrift haul video or including it in a video of some sort. Um, and then, uh, I love fillers. Well, in fairy tale, at least. Yeah. Okay. See, some people love filler. So I guess it's like, you just get to spend time with the characters more. So I get that. I do think that's like, I mean, we'll never win it all, but I do feel like a lot of the new series, while I appreciate there isn't like season long fillers, I do think they're almost moving too fast. Um, so yeah, I wish we were getting, I like, I like fillers when it's like one or two episodes, like throughout kind of sprinkled in so we can spend more time with the characters and like chilling, like in the Jujutsu Kaisen, um, the prequel, I thought the prequel arc was going to be an, its own season, um, uh, with Geto and, uh, Gojo in high school. Like I thought that was going to be its own season and I thought we were going to get a full beach episode. The beach episode was like only part of the episode. Um, anyway, I would have loved that to have been its own season, but I, yeah, unfortunately we can't win them all. Come on, you have to watch for the first time with fillers. It's like a rite of passage. I guess that's true. Okay, I guess that's true. I guess for me, um, me skipping the fillers is on rewatch. So you're right, you're right, you're right. Have you checked out Beastars? Uh, Man of Skin came out with a fun song inspired by that series and I'm interested in checking it out. Wait, that's amazing. Um, I actually haven't checked out Man of Skin yet. I kind of love them already though like i've seen like clips of them they just seem so cool uh but now that they watch b stars and they made a song about it i'm like coolness factor is like skyrocketing um i really enjoyed b stars actually i've never read the manga but i've seen the the anime it's really good actually um it's 
basically Zootopia if they really went for it in concept, in theory, and went more adult and darker with it. Yeah. <laughs> fairy tale fillers are just funny and ridiculous. Okay, it sounds like it's a good time. I've actually never seen fairy tale, but um, yeah, the big thing is that JJK's manga doesn't stop to let you process uh, what, the f what, what the fuck just happens. Yeah, we need time. We need to time it to sit in it. <laughs> They're like, go, 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 go. <laughs> Which I guess is the reality, but like, hold on. Let me, let me breathe. Have mercy on us. I also love Hunger Games, but I refuse to watch any more kids kill each other. I'm all done with that. Valid. That is very valid. <laughs> We are morbid, aren't we, as a society? Ursula is so damn hard to draw! Oh my god, I believe in you. I'm trying to paint around where the spikes are gonna be, but they're like, kinda... dodgy. I don't really know. Maybe I should just paint the whole thing and then... Yeah, I think... They're just gonna look wonky. I think I'll just paint the whole collar and then we'll paint the, the spikes in afterwards. My husband has been on a shoujo anime binge lately. Um, that's adorable. What anime, what shoujo anime has he been binging? I saw a hilarious interview with Maniskin. Um, they say their music style is what they call horny rock. Love it. I should check them out. Also, am I saying it right? Men, uh, men, mm, I feel like I'm saying it wrong. <laughs> They're Italian, right? Um, can you show us your digital art process someday? I, you know what? I keep forgetting with uh, that, cause I actually did do a digital video digital process video recently, but it was for Patreon only. Uh, so I should do one for regular YouTube. But honestly, I think the reason, like part of it, the reason why I don't include it very often is because I don't actually make a lot of digital art. Um, so that's why. But I will, I will, uh, I'll keep that in mind for future videos. Also, have you tried Procreate Dreams yet? I have not. What is that? I see. I saw people getting really excited about um, some kind of update for Procreate, but I haven't seen. I don't know what it, what it was exactly. I didn't look into it because I don't do a lot of digital art anyway. <laughs> Are you gonna watch Boy and the Heron? Yes. I actually. Um, I was just mentioning that I bought tickets to see it um, this Monday, so I'm really excited. I'm seeing it by myself. Um, I. I've never been to the movie theater by myself before. And it's kind of makes sense to be honest, because you don't really, you know, you don't want to be talking during the movie. So, um, and yeah, I, I really want to see it and it's going to be in IMAX. Um, and for whatever reason, like that was the only showtime that I could see like, uh, for the movie. Like it was just, it was just Monday. Um, and so I was like, you know what? I really want to see this and um, I don't really know anyone else who would re necessarily want to see it as much as I do. Um, so I was like, I'll just go by myself. Um, so yeah. He was just watching the ice guy and his cool female colleagues. Whoa, I've never heard of that one before. Such a long title. <laughs> there was another one, but I forgot the name. Nice. I'm so excited to see the boy and the heron. Yeah, I love the... Um, I love that Miyazaki just continues to be like, I'm retiring, and then comes out of retirement. And he's just constantly coming out of retirement. The man is restless. Oh 
Going to the movies alone sounds great. I love taking myself on dates. Exactly, right? I'm trying to embrace that more because there's so many instances where you're like, I really want to do this thing, but nobody wants to go with me. And then you don't do it. So I'm like, hold on. I can just go by myself. Um, so I'm trying to get better about that. I'm currently watching Marmalade Boy and there's so much drama. Ooh, fun. I need to draw on Procreate more, but I also need to sketch, paint, watercolor, all of the above more. Blah, I want to work on my painting, uh, work on painting my book edges for a side biz. Oh my gosh, I feel you. I constantly am like, I'm not doing enough. Uh, but then at the same time, I'm like, but I also just want to rewatch Gilmore Girls. So, constant dilemma. Okay, I am going to run to the bathroom because I can't believe it's been this long and I haven't run to the bathroom yet. Um, so I'm just going to take a sip. And then we can all have a bathroom break or all like take a moment to stretch. I also probably should stretch. But yeah, I'll be right back and uh, we will resume the painting and chatting about movies.
Hello, sorry, thank you for... <laughs> I always do that. Um, oh my gosh. Um, what was I saying? Uh, Amanda... Oh yes, Amanda, did you, did you like the new Hunger Games? What were your thoughts? She speaks. <laughs> were you telling a fun, telling us a fun story? <laughs> I was asking about the Hunger Games movie. Um, no spoilers, but I want to know if, if uh, Amanda or anyone who's seen it liked it. I thought something was wrong with my TV. I always do that because I turn like this, like my actual microphone off when I like step away, just so you like can just listen to the music. But anyway, I always forget to like fix it. Isn't Procreate Dreams a new app from them that focuses on animation? I've seen some clips. Um, yes, it sounds like it's for animation, which is very cool. Um, I personally do not do animation, so I guess that's why like I haven't checked it out. But that is very exciting for, for the animation people. Uh, Ice Guy is about a male y Yuki Ono having a desk job and trying to romance his aloof co-worker who also likes him. <laughs> that sounds so cute! <laughs> oh my god, that's so cute! <laughs> that is so... Oh my gosh. Who, who thought of that? That's hilarious. Animation would be fun, but I'm just trying to improve my drawing skills right now. Right? Exactly. I'm like, I like props to all the people who do animation, but I'm like, there is, I got too much going on. this paper. It is so much fun to paint on. Maniskin is a Danish word and Norwegian which translates to moonshine but I don't know how I'm supposed to write how it's pronounced but it's usually said wrong because the A and skin. Uh, yeah I, I always knew that the A had the little accent on it. I'll just like I'll, I'll google it later um, on how to pronounce it. <laughs> That is so cool though. Moonshine is a really nice like... Also because of what I've gathered about the group, it makes sense that they would pick that name because Moonshine is alcohol, right? <laughs> she is looking so cute. Thank you! I really like how she turned. she's turned it out. I'm very pleased. And I'm also enjoying the fact that painting on live is actually not so bad. Um, I'm always really worried about painting on live because I'm like, that's so much pressure. Um, but this actually was like, not so bad. I guess like, cause it's, it's a very simple painting and also um, acrylic gouache dries a lot faster than something like watercolor. So gouache is the way to go for sure with uh, painting live. And simple portrait. Simple portrait. And I had a plan too, which helps. And yeah, now that I'm, uh, I'm gonna be winding down from the monthly favorites after this year, um, I am excited to explore other, other mediums and other things in future live streams in uh, moving into the next year. Just bought the brushes, yay, I'm excited. Yay, thank you, thank you. It was really good, definitely worth watching. Very interesting to see how 
uh, Pan Am was in the past. I also read the book right before and recommend that too. Ah, yes, I'm so torn because I read the Hunger Games books before the movies came out and I loved them. Um, but I'm like, I don't think I have time realistically to read the book before seeing the movie. Who knows though? Maybe I can just, it's probably not that long, right? Maybe, maybe I'm underestimating my reading abilities. I just don't read that much these days. So. <laughs> the book was good, but I actually enjoyed the movie more. Ooh, okay, okay. I saw an interview on Wired with them. They said it's more like Monskin, but they but because everyone says it's wrong, they've accepted. Oh yes, I think I did see that interview, and I was like trying to remember the original pronunciation. <laughs> That's funny. I love watching your videos and working on my own little projects. I love to do art as a job, but I'm not really an ambitious person. So the workload to even get started feels a bit daunting. I will say it definitely is. You definitely need to have like a lot of determination <laughs> to, to do it because you um, it's very like self-motivated. <laughs> but I'm happy that my videos can keep you company. And like, you know, it can always be a side thing if you have time for it. It doesn't have to be a full-time thing, but yeah, I will say it's not, uh, you do need to be fairly ambitious for it. You go girl, I can't wait to see what sort of artistic phases you're going to lead us through. Yay, thanks. I'm happy to have you all on my journey. my little art corner in the in the grand scheme of things is pretty great y'all are great you could try to get through the audiobook maybe i'm obsessed with the audiobooks right now ah yeah that's true i have a lot of audiobooks in my library that i have been neglecting um i'm currently just starting the second uh what is it called crooked kingdom no what is it called um the six of crows but the sequel which I just found out that it didn't get renewed. The TV show, I'm so sad. I really, really wanted um, more Six of Crows. Sad, so sad. Do you have any advice for when you feel drained but you have a lot of things to do? Oh, um, my, you, my usual go-to is um, to try and keep myself entertained as best as possible when I'm trying to do the tasks that I don't necessarily want to do. Um, so one of those being uh, like video essays on YouTube or rewatching like old TV shows, audiobooks, uh, podcasts, like nostalgic mu music, like literally like anything that will help feel like I'm, yeah, like I'm being entertained in some way so that I can stay on task because, yeah, um, I, I have those moments a lot. Actually, uh, <laughs> very specific, but one of the videos that kept me company during my recent, like, large illustration was I watched, um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Friendly Space Ninja. He's uh, He's got a YouTube channel where he does a lot of movie and TV show kind of video essays. And he did one, it's like three or four hours long. It's like super, super long. Um, but he did this like whole breakdown on the uh, the TV show, The Originals, which was like the spinoff series from uh, The Vampire Diaries. And like, it kept me focused like the whole time. I was enthralled, but also I managed to like finish my, 
or not fit. I don't know if I finished, but I got like, yeah, I got a lot accomplished on my painting. And yeah, that was like three, four hours of time. <laughs> That's just me though. I know everyone functions a little differently. Maybe that would be like do, too distracting for some people, but that's how I managed to uh, keep myself on task. Uh, sorry, I said this while you were in the bathroom. You said you don't draw digitally, but technically you draw digitally a lot for colors and sketching. That's a really smart way to use it. Yes, that is true. Oh yeah, and I did reply to that when I was accidentally muted. Um, so yeah, I think that is a good thing to keep in mind for myself that maybe I just need to film that part um, beforehand and include that in a video. And then like it can be... I think I've technically done that before. Uh, most of the time it's a time lapse, but um, yeah, we will try and keep that in mind for a future reference. Like actually discussing my digital, that part of the digital process a little more. Wait, how do y'all English speaking people say double A like in Norwegian that's the same as A? So that maybe helps. Is there? I don't think there are any words with two A's though. That's probably why we don't understand how to say it. <laughs> I did listen to the audiobook. My reading attention span is horrible lately. Uh, I get so much reading done when I put them on when I'm drawing. Yes, I think that's my mindset as well, or at least that was my mindset when I joined Audible a while back. I have since, um, canceled my membership because I wasn't getting through the books fast enough. Um, but yes, I do think audiobooks are a great alternative. I know that like sometimes people don't love audiobooks just because they narration is some people just might not like the style of narration for certain books, but or for certain um, yeah, from certain narrators. There we go. But yeah, I am, I will get through them eventually. <laughs> I have a whole bunch in my library. I need to finish Shadow and Bone, but I always procrastinate watching the end, uh, the end of things. I'm really bad for that too. I don't know what it is. I'm, I'm, I have a hard time following through with stuff too. Like when I get towards the end. What is that? Can someone psychoanalysis us? <laughs> I don't know for other languages, but in German we pronounce A like Americans would say ah. Oh. Maybe that's the sound you mean. Uh, ma Oh, that, that makes sense because the mon, monoskin, right? Instead of maniskin, monoskin. Yeah, I'm really picky with narration. It can make or break your audiobook. Yeah, I agree. Sometimes when I listen to audiobooks, they pronounce words wrong and it feels like nails on a chalkboard to me. Yeah, and that's especially challenging when it's like a fantasy series, right? When uh, there's new, new words being made. Uh, so then sometimes it's like, can be interesting when you think it's pronounced one way, but then you're like, is this audiobook, is this the right way or... I remember distinctly, <laughs> this is like a silly thing too, uh, but the, the, the Twilight books, I read those when I was in high school and I had no idea how, how to pronounce Carlisle, uh, like the, the doctor's, the, the, the dad's name. And I think I only found out until the movie came out. I don't even remember how I was pronouncing it before, uh, but that's another one with um, Harry Potter, like a lot of people didn't know how to pronounce Hermione. <laughs> Hermie one for my very Potter musical fans. Especially when they pronounce names in a way that sounds weird. Oh, and also the skin is more like shine. So it's like 
Moneshin. Moneshin? Oh no, Moneshine. Moneshine. Ah, Moneshine. Oh, that makes sense. Moonshine. Moneshine. Oh, that sounds way better. Yeah, that sounds way better than mana skin. Moneshine. Ah, okay, okay, okay. That sounds so nice. That sounds way nicer. <laughs> I understand now. <laughs> or it helps you hear a word, uh, helps you hear a weird character's name that you have no idea how to pronounce, and they say it like Hermione, like, Mom read me Harry Potter when I was a kid. Aww. Um, I put off watching the ending of TV shows and series I love because of the sadness I feel when it's all over. That's true. That's true. One book I was listening to, they kept saying Scythe wrong and it hurt my soul. <laughs> oh, wait. Scythe? Scythe? S -s 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 I'm probably saying it wrong. <laughs> I like my, I like my mom said Herm, Hermone. Oh. Interesting. Yeah, I feel like that's that's one that I think for me they were coming out and I started reading them afterwards. So I already knew how to pronounce it. I thought Renesme was pronounced re niece me. Ah right. Yeah 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 yeah. Sounds like Monshkai. Monsh Monsh <laughs> I'm oh my god, I'm so bad with languages, y'all. Uh, which is the same word in German. Oh, so interesting. Languages are so cool. I'm gonna try and remember that. Mon, monish, monishine, mon, monishine. It's easier to remember when you know it's. It means moonshine. I think that helps definitely. I'll have to listen to them. Like, actually listen to them. <laughs> I've, uh... I'm probably... Oh my gosh. Are we all embarrassed uh, of our Spotify wrapped this year? Or Apple Music wrapped? I don't know what the Apple Music equivalent is called. But, um... Oh my gosh. I mean, not, mine is not surprising, but it was all K-pop. Like, for the top songs and the top artists. But I was, um, I was, I was kind of expecting 80s to be number one for me this year, but it ended up being 17 again, which is also makes sense. Um, but man, 80s was second, so I mean. <laughs> My rap is just Jungkook. <laughs> Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. <laughs> Shine is pronounced pretty much the same as shine. Ah, okay. Yes. Monshine. Monshine. Uh, mom's language was Spanish so far. Uh, mom's Spanish was Spanish so for a while she mispronounced Hermione and I was dunked on for mispronouncing it too. Aww. <laughs> That's so cute though. Uh, I was in Taylor Swift's 0.5% listeners, and I am not embarrassed. You shouldn't be. She's a queen. She was the top global artist, I think. She's like the top artist of the year, which is like, she's killing it. Good for her. Uh, how did you like AT's comeback? I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, I watched, I was saying this earlier. I watched it. Like the the thumbnail popped up and it said posted 40 seconds ago. <laughs> I shouldn't be proud of that, but <laughs> anyway, I'm obsessed. I think of the comebacks of the 80s comeback. I think bouncy is my favorite of the two, um, like song wise. But I still love it. Do 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 do. Oh, it's so fun. I'm sorry, I'm being so slow painting wise. Um, let's do, I wanna add more blue, but also the, 
this part of the this part of the process is like not very exciting because it's like so nitty gritty. Like it's just like really minute finessing. But we're having fun. We're having fun. That's what matters. My uncle told me they couldn't pronounce Thor's hammer when they read the comics and were so happy when they heard it said right the first time. Oh yeah, the mo. I don't remember how it's pronounced either. <laughs> I think my most listened to was Motionless in White. Hmm. I'm not familiar with that. I thought mine was gonna be just uh, Emmy? Am I? Emmy? Uh, but then I remembered that I only started listening to her in October, but I felt like all year because it's been on repeat. I know, right? That's the thing with, with Spotify Wrapped is like, I think that a lot of times it gets skewed because you know, certain things like might have not been released until like, yeah, right beforehand. Cause, um, that's just how it goes. So I think that's a big part of why my Spotify rap was 17 because they released like their new album, like back in April. Dude, I was in Aurora's 0.1% listeners and I'm not ashamed. That's amazing. You're a mega fan. Mega, mega fan. I also watched the Eras movie twice in the cinema and loved it. Gonna see the tour at least three times next year and I'm so excited. Should I have bought a new mattress with that money? Yeah. <laughs> Am I seeing Taylor three times instead? Hell yeah. Yes! You can buy a mattress anytime, but you are not gonna be able to see the Eras tour anytime. So I applaud and I am on board with going to see the concert instead. <laughs> um, I saw the movie and I enjoyed it quite a lot. She's gonna put on one hell of a show when you go see her. I tried to get tickets cause she has six shows uh, <laughs> in Toronto, but those tickets are hard to get. Um, so unfortunately I don't think I will be seeing her, which I have accepted, it's, it's fine. Um, I might try and, you know, maybe I'll poke around closer to the concert day and see if there's any last minute things that I can snag, but it's okay if I don't. I'm not like a mega, mega, mega Swifty, but I think the Eras tour will be quite an amazing show to see. I want to branch out on K-pop. I only, I really only know Blackpink and Girl Generation. My fave song is an oldie but goodie, Mr. Taxi, it's so catchy. Oh, so catchy. Um, if you are looking to branch out, I recommend New Jeans, just based off of, uh, since you're, you listen to girl groups. New Jeans is like so addicting, it's so fun. But if you like, Sana, if you want a little bit more edgy, uh, I'd say La Seraphim is also worth checking out. Twice is like uh, a, a good one also. I saw Twice live um, in concert this year and they were amazing. And they were actually in my top five. They were number four, I think, in my uh, Spotify wrapped because I was listening to them a lot uh, prior to the concert. Motionless in White is a metal band. Ah, okay, okay. Metal music is not something that I have forayed into personally. Um, I'm having a hard time with my OCs. I keep making all the guys buff. I mean, they're your old characters, so do what you want. I'm not mad at a buff character. <laughs> I was in Jungkook's 0.05 listeners. <laughs> Truly, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I listened to songs on repeat because I was learning the bridges and all of those songs made it into my rap. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's so fun, though. Um, I am, I'm a, you know how it tells you like, oh, you're a vampire, you're a this. I think I got time traveler and it's basically just being like, yeah, you repeat 
songs over and over and over. <laughs> you just go back to um, say songs you already know. Um, and I was like, yeah, fair. My genres was all pop. It was K-pop, uh, regular, like regular pop, I think boy group, K-pop, pop, girl group, K-pop, pop, and then pop punk at the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> Which I thought was so funny, but it was all pop. I just got tickets this morning to see the Stardew Valley Orchestra and I can't wait. Oh my god, that's going to be so fun and beautiful. I've been really wanting to go to like an orchestra um, performance of like some kind of soundtrack. They recently had one for Miyazaki and I'm really sad that I missed it, but hopefully I can I can check out a, a, another one. But I love I love the idea of those. I want to go to one eventually. <laughs> think you can share your Spotify playlist. See, okay. I've had people ask um, uh, for me to share my Spotify before. And like, all, at the end of the day, it really has like no, there's like no harm in it whatsoever. But I think I'm marginally embarrassed for people to be able to see my Spotify uh, uh, listening habits. <laughs> I think for the most part, only like a couple of my real life friends know my Spotify account profile. And even then I'm like, please don't judge me. Um, <laughs> I honestly though, I really shouldn't be embarrassed by it. Cause like, who cares? Um, and yeah, I'm sure some of you who have like similar music tastes to me would, would uh, want to see and benefit, maybe enjoy my, uh, my playlist. Maybe I just need to get over the embarrassment. There really is, there is not that much to be embarrassed about. My recently most listened are all pop songs about mental health issues and ADHD. So I got vampire, you know, perusing the darkness and all. I a lot of people on my Instagram feed has been getting vampire, and I'm jealous because I want to be a vampire. <laughs> I would kill to go see a live orchestra of the Howl soundtrack. Yes, <gasps> that'd be so magical. Oh my gosh. Yeah, the, the the one that I missed, it was Ghibli in general, so it wasn't just Howl's, but definitely the merry-go-round song was, was in the set list. Okay, Tina, keep it to yourself. You don't have to share everything. <laughs> That's true. Thank you. <laughs> uh, mine was vampire, which makes sense with my sad, dramatic cancer energy. <laughs> yeah, everyone got vampire. I want vampire. The uh, app Airbuds shows what your friends are listening to in the uh, listening in the moment, and it's so funny how everyone just makes fun of each other nicely. Of course, yeah, I imagine it's like fun teasing. What was that noise? It sounds like the pigeons are trying to drop a piano on your balcony. The pigeons! Oh my gosh, the pigeons. Oh, I'm so mad at the pigeons. But thankfully, it's just construction, um, as far as I know. Hopefully not pigeons. It's really dark out now. The snow has stopped, I think. Now it's rain, I think. Or it's like really, really wet looking snow. Actually, now that it's so dark out, I'm gonna close my curtains.
sometimes I get like paranoid that the um, construction people can see me. <laughs> I don't think they can, but just in case. Um, where did I just put my paintbrush? I grew up going to, what is that emoji? Um, operas, and I'd say if you get emotional listening to music at all, watch your makeup. It gets pretty intense with a live performance of an orchestra. It's beautiful to experience. Oh my goodness, yeah. I mean, I've definitely, specifically, I remember going to see Big Hero 6, and I left the movie theater, and it was just like perfect tear streams like on my face because it had like removed my foundation. <laughs> But like, how dare they? That movie was, mm. oh my god. Oh good, Tina is safe from rat birds, for now. <laughs> for now. Oh wow, it's snowing over there, how pretty. I know, right? I mean, it's like, not, it was very pretty earlier. Now it's like, just sad and wet, but hopefully some pretty snow action will happen. Uh, maybe tomorrow night when I'm indoors watching anime with my friend okay the moment we've been waiting for let's do more eye more of the eyes here ballet oh ballet shoes that's what it is okay my my eyeballs were like are these are these dancing <laughs> logs <laughs> i see it now i see that they're ballet shoes oh my gosh yeah i saw the nutcracker um a number of years ago and it was in fact beautiful um the nutcracker ballet is actually what inspired my um or like partly is what inspired the those like illustrations that i've done with like the unicorn character partly inspired by the last unicorn but also partly inspired by the nutcracker It's also snowing in Austria. It's finally white outside, but dark now. Ah, see, that's like pretty. That's pretty. We are not there yet. It's like the snow is too wet and like light to um, have actually stuck to the ground so far. So it's just gloomy and wet. <laughs> Uh, it's not a bad idea to keep your Spotify to yourself as a boundary. You already share so much of yourself with us. Thanks, guys. Um, but obviously, you know, no no hard feelings for, for people asking about the, the Spotify um, playlist. Especially, I remember when I mentioned um, I had an anime one. People were like, can you share your anime playlist? It's just like anime openings and endings, which is also very fun. Um to listen to but yeah I have some I have some interesting uh, Spotify uh, listening habits sometimes I think <laughs> I've just been going through a lot of like nostalgic um, roots lately unfortunately it's also kind of wet so don't know if the snow will stay ah the first time I saw the Nutcracker, I was so happy because the lead ballerina was black and that was the first time I had seen that before. That's amazing. Oh my gosh. Props to her. I did a ballerina squirrel with a Nutcracker. It was so darling. I should frame that. That sounds so cute. <laughs> I love going to see live performances. Like, it's just so cool. Okay, let's get some lashes in. That will definitely help seal the deal. I listen to the anime Spotify playlist. It's kind of like cafe music. Ooh, I love that. Okay, ready friends? Here we got snow and uh, 11, a uh, negative 11 in the morning. Oof, oh my gosh. Cold, cold. This is, of course, the three over zero brush. 
round. Very, very good for details and line art. Super satisfying. This was obviously a must have in my custom paintbrush set for them spiky lashes. I had the privilege of seeing the Rockettes in New York, and even though I'm not a ballet fan, I loved it. Ooh, yes. I think that's the thing too, is like, seeing things live is just a different experience. It's like, maybe you don't seek it out on your on your day-to-day -day life, but yeah, seeing it live is just an, an extra special experience. Like, yeah, like I don't listen to the Nutcracker soundtrack on my own, but seeing it live was beautiful. It's the whole package, it's the whole experience. And also I love getting dressed up. You know me, I like getting dressed up. So the ballet seems like the perfect thing. The ballet, live performances of any kind. And you know, I like to make a whole thing of it, go get dinner, have a drink. I just looked at the time and saw that the stream is three hours long. Where did the time go? Oh my gosh. I know, right? It's crazy. I just, I have so much fun. It's so much fun. Is this painting for Patreon? I need her. She's so cute, right? Um, It's actually, I don't have any specific plans for her. Maybe I'll just like sell this original. Um, the, she was, actually based off of a design I did for Patreon back in February. I don't know where I have the stickers right now, but hold up. So these were the sticker designs that I did for the February Patreon reward. Um, and they are available in the Patreon secret shop as stickers. Um, but the actual, this actual painting, I'm not sure um, what I'm gonna, I think at, at very least I'll sell this little original. Um, and I wanna do the bunny character too. Hold on, whoops. So the plan is, I guess not today, probably not, but um, at some point I wanna do the bunny character on this one and there'll be a little cute set to get her. Cause you know, I like little, I like little sets. They're pairings, they're cute. Anyway, paper is from Danny who sent it to me in my PO box. Same with sports, I don't care for football or other sport games on TV, but if I go to a hockey game, I'm cheering like crazy. Oh, that's so good, I love that. I think that's um, pretty common for the Olympics, right? Like I think a lot of people who are not necessarily sports people really enjoy the Olympics. Um, I do not follow any sports like at all, unless it's a sports anime, haiku, <laughs> basically. Um, but I know a lot of people love the Olympics. Spiky, spiky lashes. I feel like... Or, the eyes are feeling pretty dramatic, but maybe, let me see. Maybe I just need to put the, the highlight in that I'll probably, I'm like something weird is going on here. Let me see. I'll make them little hearts. Cute. Oh, you know what? She doesn't have eyebrows. I was like, something weird's going on. She doesn't have eyebrows, that's why. <laughs> Since the first time you talked about your custom brushes, I knew you'd include a tiny, uh, a tiny brush for details. Yes, of course, it's a must. Man, those lashes are sharp, right? Right? You know, custom paints brush come through. Yes, okay. I think when we give her eyebrows, that will that'll tie everything in. I was like, there is something wrong with this. And now I understand. It's because she doesn't have eyebrows. I know that it's like, mostly her hair is covering it, but I think just, yeah. 
Just a little, little impression of eyebrow will help. Or do I make the bangs shorter? Is that too late? I think the eyes got bigger than uh, the original sketch, maybe. I don't know. That helped though, for sure. The eyebrows, the impression of the eyebrows there. And then maybe I will also do um, a little highlight like on the lash line. Yeah, I think that helps like, it just felt so dark so let's do that. I can't wait to paint with that tiny brush. I'm balls to the walls crazy about detail right now. Yes, it'll be perfect for that. Yeah, I went through um, a couple, I went through a diff um, two different lengths basically. Like I originally, um, my, my first sample of it was, it was a little bit longer cause I thought, oh, it'll hold more paint so that you can get, you know, more, uh, mileage out of the, each stroke. But then I found that it being longer, it was harder to control. So then I ended up making it slightly shorter. So, you know, I really, I did like, yeah, it feels, it feels like it was really custom. I, I put some extra thought into into the how it would feel and how it would, how it would perform. And yeah, that was I was really that was like very generous of uh, Craft Demo was they allowed me to have more than one sample. Yes, okay. I think I like that better. Having it like just kind of broken up a little bit, a little bit lighter. And um, which I think will be good for the hair too, to add like some highlights in the hair. And then let's do, let's do that. Ooh, hydration remember, reminder friends. I feel like there was something I wanted to talk to you guys about in the live stream, but I forget now. What were the websites you recommended for models in different poses struggling to find a back facing clothed woman? Oh, uh, Graffiti Studios is a great resource for, uh, let's see, do I have, if I was smart, I would know how to do this on screen. Um, let's see, do I know how to do this? that work? No. No. <laughs> I don't know how to do it. Um, but I have it linked in the description, I think, because I have a discount code to Graffiti Studios. They make like, um, yeah, reference packs for artists for posing and stuff. Um, and then for free, free poses, um, line of action, I think is like a good, um, reference, um, place for like figure, figure studies and stuff.
Thank you for your help. Oh yeah, no problem. If you, um, I have a video on my YouTube channel called, what was it called? Like ways to, uh, ways to improve your figure drawing or something like that. I forget, um, exactly the title, uh, but I shared like different resources in that video as well. I just can't remember all of them off the top of my head. Oh, I haven't seen the, I haven't fully watched the trailer yet, but I've seen a lot of people talking about it. How do we feel about the new live action uh, Avatar The Last Airbender teaser stuff coming out? I'm definitely curious. I'm definitely curious about it. I left and came back and was ready to see a really simple chibi, but came back to these eyes doing the absolute most. <laughs> they are, the eyes are doing the absolute most. Maybe too much, honestly. <laughs> Thank you, though. I was, I just went ham. I went to town. I think because this liner brush is just like so satisfying to use. <laughs> but yeah, she's doing a lot. <laughs> but I guess the eyes are the focal point, so it's all good. Curious, sir, uh, uh, about the new Avatar movie, bit, bit scared about being disappointed again. Yes, I agree. I'm definitely very keen on all the new animated Avatar stuff for sure. Um, but I guess because we haven't heard as much about it yet because that stuff just takes so long. Um, but yeah, for sure, way more excited about that. But I guess because the live action one is closer in terms of release date. Be extra, Tina. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I, I appreciate the, enable, the enabling. Uh, bye, Tina. I enjoyed your live. Thanks for cozy vibes. Thanks for coming. Enjoy your day or evening. Watch my typing. I guess I should check my blood sugars. <laughs> That's okay. I knew what you were saying. No worries. I honestly, I talk like that all the time. Um, mo like my other, some of my friends, like they just, they just know what I mean and they just, they just go with it. But so I do have friends who are like, what are you saying? Can you, what? Can you say that again? <laughs> Seeing how well the live action One Piece is doing kind of gives me some hope that the age of horrible live action adapt adaptations are, is over. I do think that that is an argument a lot of people are having, or at least like that is giving them hope, the live action One Piece, but that could be a fluke. That could be an exception, you know, we'll see. <laughs> You're awesome, Tina. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Tina, you've sold 78 paintbrush sets. Congrats, that's amazing. That is, I, that is amazing, holy crap. Thank you for, for letting me know how many sold. That's, I feel really good about that, wow. Now I'm wondering, what's the 200 that they... If that's the case, that's really... Mm, was it? Maybe they made more than 200. I don't remember. I don't remember. <gasps> I feel really good about that, though. That's awesome. In the first day, I feel really good about that. I need that win. I need that. That is a great feeling to go into the weekend. Thanks, friends. Thanks for uh, thanks to everyone who bought, who bought who bought one. Two hundred and seventeen left. Oh, so they made seven. So they made three hundred. I think, right? If mm, math. Mm. So made three hundred. I can't get on the website right now. It won't load. Oh no. <laughs> okay, so they must have made three hundred then, or around that. That makes more sense. Or that's or that's good. And so then people, everyone can grab one. 
Oof, I really hope. Avatar has a special place in my heart. Avatar is so near and dear to me, it's unbelievable. Like, it is my favorite. Like, literally. Uh, and I better go and get my hands on those brushes before they're gone. I recommend it. I recommend it. Uh, I haven't bought yet because I keep poking my husband to give them to me. Forwarded the launch email, so count at least one more. Yay! I hope your husband uh, follows through. We're, we're watching. We're watching him. <laughs> Nick is never going to make something better. It was incredible. Absolutely. Like, Nickelodeon... Like, it is so random that it was Nickelodeon, but like, obviously, props to whoever like greenlit um, and let Brian and Mike make just an immaculate TV show. It is, it is, what do they call it? Like, um, lightning in a bottle. Like, it really just, chef's kiss. Yes, lightning in a bottle. Yes, exactly, exactly. It's just so good. Does anyone know if they're making a show for Kiyoshi? The books are fire. <gasps> I think yes, I yes, Chanel, I've also heard rumors. I've also heard rumors as well that they're they're that's like a rumored animation project the 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 original creators are working on. So I would love that. I've never read the books, but I'm like kind of tempted because Kiyoshi is obviously one of the coolest um, previous avatars. And she's also queer, like, hello, yes, love. So, fingers crossed, agreed, agreed. I'm excited for it, it looks like it's gonna be an improvement from the movie. I mean, the movie, <laughs> the live action movie, it's like, if we can't, if we can't get better than that, there is no hope. So let's, yeah. Um, also, I actually, I wanted to do, some some special elements so what we're gonna do is i have this little section of uh blue right here right here i, I really wanted to avoid adding more like too much more paint but we have no choice we're gonna add more because wait where the heck there it is because i really want to do some like stars around her i think that'll be really cute so that's what we're gonna do for funsies just a little, just a little bit. More paint! <laughs> yeah. Can we please get a Batman movie that uses this design as their Catwoman? Oh my god, that'd be so cute, right? <laughs> I still, I'm late, but I still haven't seen the Robert Pattinson, Zoe Kravitz um, Batman movie. I should though, because I heard that people really enjoyed it, and I've been a long time Batman fan. So, and Zoe Kravitz cast as Catwoman, I think that's like a really good choice. Did you already talk about the process of designing the brushes? I actually I haven't talked too much about it. So, basically, um, the specs were that I was allowed to pick how many, how many, um, how many in the set, um, all the sizes, the lengths, um, the color of the metal, as well as the color of, um, the handle and the color of the bristle. So like, it was like, yeah, um, basically what I did was I gathered up all of the sizes, like my most used paintbrushes from my current collection. Um, and I knew that I needed some rounds and I knew I needed some filberts like this round shape. Um, and then I knew I needed one big one for like big washes. And I literally took a, 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 a ruler and measured, um, my current, like the brushes that I was using and yeah, they, they needed the measurements in millimeters, I think. So it was like really, really specific, which I appreciated obviously, um, both in length and in width, um, in millimeters. And then, yeah, the first round, um, they, a lot of the rounds I found were slightly longer than, um, I thought I needed. So I originally wanted to go longer than the brushes I was using because I thought it would hold more paint. 
but then I found it was harder to control. So then we, I got a second sample with um, slightly shorter um, bristles and then I was like, okay, this is it. So yeah, so that was the process of, um, of that. And then same with the, the color. So originally they were a little bit more saturated, um, but I wanted them to be more pastel. So for the second round, and I gave them, they needed the colors in uh, Pantones, so that'd be spot on. But even with Pantone colors, it's like the color you see printed and the color you see in person is, um, or no, uh, in on the screen is a little different. So yeah, the first round was slightly less um, pastel. There was like a little bit more vibrant. So we, we swapped that as well. And I definitely knew I wanted to go rose gold. It's very like cutesy, girly. So yeah, that's that was the reasoning with the rose gold. And then the bristles as well. I actually originally, um, they were all pink originally, um, but I felt like it was just too pink heavy um, to have the like pink, like, you know, primarily pink barrel and then pink bristle. So then that's why I ended up going with pink just on the ends and then the white just to help break it up. So I felt like that really helped as well. Uh, yeah, do I have, I have the original one. Yeah, here. As you can see, this was the first sample um, where the bristle was all pink. And then you can kinda, it's, yeah, actually you can see it on camera too. Like not as well maybe in person, but this was slightly more pink um you can see in the blue too so i wanted it to be like really pastel so that's yeah there was nothing wrong with the first version it was just you know just tweaking it to be like exactly how i wanted it to be and i think yeah you can see the length too the first one was slightly longer i just felt like it was just harder to control um being that length so we made it a little shorter And then, yeah, I've seen people do like custom writing and stuff, but all of my Patreon prints, I do this font for the I'm a Wonder, so it just felt fitting. Um, and I felt like this font looked nice with the Craftimo logo as well. Uh, so you can't clean the Stay Wet palette. You have to throw it away. Um, they use sheets of parchment paper. Yes, exactly. So how it works is it's like a palette paper, like a sheet. So you can see like that. And then this is like a wet sponge underneath. Um, and yeah, I ama I'm amazed. Um, I've literally been using this same palette paper or parchment paper since January crazy crazy um because i just keep like reusing the paint and just putting more paint in um but technically you are supposed to swap it out like periodically <laughs> um but i don't i just like add more water and paint to it the other day like the the sponge like underneath was like totally shriveled up um and i just like carefully peeled the palette paper back added more water and then yeah it's pretty amazing. They are so pretty. Yay, thank you. I'm finally sitting. Oh, yay. How did the cookies or the no, cake? How is how's the cake turning out? Or maybe it's in the oven. They sound like they were going to be really good. Um, very cool. A lot of thought put into it. Having pretty tools makes any pro art process more fun. Exactly. Um, and, you know, considering that I film a lot of YouTube videos and I photograph my work with, like, the art supplies in the shot, um, having them be custom and, like, fit my aesthetic was just, like, an added bonus for sure. Which, oh my god, by the way, congrats on your book, Chanel. That is so exciting. Um, for those of you who don't know, Bitter Melon Bindery is... Um, a book binding channel and Chanel is so nice and so cool and she just released a book so if you're into book binding check her out
Thanks for the shout out. Oh my God, of course. I love your website, very nice. Oh, thank you. Not replacing the paper, Tina, you absolute mad woman. <laughs> I know, I don't, I just like, I just like squirrel away in like little areas. Like it's just so, so silly. Like all these like little nooks and crannies where I'm like, I mean, I don't know. I'm just, I hate wasting stuff. <laughs> You actually can clean it. Run it under water gently. I have the same palette. Ah, that makes sense. Uh, I gotta get me that palette. It's like thirty dollars on Amazon, right? I'm not. Sh I forget how much it is. Um, there's two. There's like there's multiple brands. Um, the one that was sent to me was Red Grass, but I think Stay Stow Wet. S T A dash wet is the most common. Um, I have both of them linked in the description. So uh, yeah, highly, highly recommend. I have like a whole video about it actually. Um, like just talking about the benefits and how to use it and stuff. I'm making books as I watch. Oh, perfect. I like that uh, we can keep each other company. Uh, they are done. Cake is frosted. Cookies are cooling down and they look delicious. Oh my gosh. So good. I recently went to a bakery because I was really craving sweets. So I'll be having that for, um, for dessert today. It's like, I don't even know what to describe it as. It's like a cream puff, but shaped like a loaf of bread, like a block of, like a cube of bread uh but it's filled with like cream <laughs> i don't know how to describe it um but it's earl gray flavored so i'm very excited i had a strawberry one yesterday which was also very good i just realized i should have done the line art for the outside first before doing these little starbursts but that's okay i have to go around it It would be nice if you could do a YouTube video on the entire process from start to finish with the paintbrushes, like how Craftamo contacted you and how it all began. I'm so curious. Ooh, maybe I'll make that a Patreon video. Um, Cause there isn't like a lot to show or explain, but I think that could make for a really good, um, yeah, you, uh, Patreon video maybe, uh, or like a YouTube short or something. There's a Stay Wet palette that has wells, like a watercolor palette. I want that one for my regular gouache paints. Ooh, I didn't know that. That's really cool. That makes sense because yeah, sometimes they get a little, they kind of run away from you if they're a little bit too watery. Are we going too ham on these eyes? Eh, it's fun. They're very sparkly. Um, okay. I need to run to the bathroom. So I will be right back. Everyone, you can also, this is also your intermission <laughs> to uh, take a quick break. Instead of the BR, no, I should have the BRB sign it in case people are like, where is she? Um, okay. Potty break, <laughs> yeah, basically. And maybe a snack. I kinda want a snack. Um, okay. I'll be right back. This time I'll try and remember not to be muted when I come back. <laughs> remember to unmute when you return. Yes, thank you, Chanel. <laughs>
There we go. Hello. Okay. I have returned. <laughs> and I have the mic on. And I turn on my overhead light because it's basically nighttime outside now. Hydrate, guys. Yes, yes, yes. Hydrate. I like just inhaled a, a mini croissant. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting better. I can learn. You can you can teach the dog tricks, new tricks. Um, do you ever just stop and think like, wow, that this paper was blank three hours ago? You did that, girl. <laughs> Thank you. It is true. Art is pretty cool. It is very cool. How is the gym? Are you still at the gym? Return of the Queen, TM. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I secured the brushes. I can't wait to paint with them. I'm so excited. Yay! Thank you, thank you. That is... Oh, I feel very good. Thank you all for being here. And I look forward to watching the Blue Samurai later. <laughs> okay. Sorry. I like... I inhaled... A croissant just now and like in my teeth okay now I think yeah I think I'll do the liner around her I think I want it to be a little thicker so we're gonna go in with the, the number three brush I think I actually I want to make the hat a little bit bigger look like a little bigger too so do that. Your palette link is Amazon Canada naturally, but it doesn't automatically switch to country of origin, so I can't buy direct from your links. Ah, okay. Thank you so much for letting me know. Um, I typically make my Amazon, or I, yeah, previously I made my Amazon links um, from .com as opposed to .ca, so that was a mistake on my part. Um, but thank you for letting me know, actually, because I'll fix that next time. Because, uh, yeah, most of my audience is not in Canada. Haha, <laughs> no. I'm back home now looking at my sketchbook. Barbie-inspired art. Ooh, that'll be fun. Um, oh my god, hi, Tina. Finally caught a live stream. LOL, it's so hard when I live in literally the opposite time zone. Aw, well, I'm glad you finally made it. Um, I am... We're, we've been having a good time. We've, we've talked about a lot of different things. Um... And I just ate a croissant, so that means I will continue to stream for a little bit longer because typically what ends up, you know, uh, the reason, usually the reason why I stop streaming is because I get hungry. But now I'm invincible. This is almost done, so we will move on to something else after. I don't know if I want to commit to another one, like the bunny portrait for today. So I might actually just bust out my uh, my other sketchbook and maybe we'll just like do some sketching. Even though technically I'm supposed to be advertising the paintbrushes, but you know, most of the stream was this, this, this paintbrush set. So it's all good. And I'm going to be like painting with these and all my other YouTube videos. So it's all good. They will, uh, they will be heavily advertised. This is my first time staying for the whole stream. This is wild and I'm glued. Oh my god, thank you for your dedication. And also, yeah, I love that we've uh, gone through your whole day with you. Like, you went to the gym, now you're at your sketchbook. I love hearing about, like, what you guys get up to. People have baked a whole um, creative uh, phenomenon, has baked a cake, a full cake, and cookies. Amazing. Look at what we can accomplish. Technology is amazing. 
Like when you think about it, the fact that we can all hang out together and you're all from all over the world, so cool. Tina streams are awesome. <laughs> thank you, thank you. You guys make them awesome though, for real. I'm like, for those of you who have come a little bit later, we were earlier, we were talking about doing a Christmas live stream. I'm like heavily considering it for reals. Christmas live stream with drinking. <laughs> Me drinking, not, not an obligation for anyone else to be drinking. Um, I'm a teacher literally since the kids left the school. I've been on stream. Ah, oh wow. Oh my gosh What do you teach if you don't mind me asking? Not sure why it says cop. <laughs> I assumed that was a that was a, a weird typo. So no worries One ear is slightly pointier than the other one. There. Around. Make, gotta make sure it's like still pointy because then it'll start to look like a bear or something. Uh, oh, Aaron's a teacher too, wow. Math, third grade, they're still very sweet. World hasn't made them jaded yet. Aww. That's good, that's good that they're sweet. Have you guys seen the, 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 I think it's a, yeah, TikTok channel where it's, um, this guy that interviews kindergartners? It's adorable. I'm not even, like, a kid's person, but it's very, very cute. Ah! Oh, <laughs> my phone wasn't on silent. I got a text message. From my, it's from my aunt <laughs> asking about something. I'll reply to her later. It's all good. Nothing urgent, so it's good. All good. You told a story about that guy that sang jazz to you yet? <laughs> no, I haven't. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Are y'all ready for a story? Um, okay. So in my recent YouTube video, when I answered your anonymous questions, I had someone ask, um, <laughs> what was my worst date? And I didn't have time to you know, like tell the whole story, but basically I had alluded to the fact that uh, the date sang jazz to me without me asking for it. Um, <laughs> and I was like, if you wanna add, like someone can ask in a live stream, maybe I'll talk about it, so. <laughs> oh my God, okay. Um, I love that we're all invested in this, okay. I love hearing about bad date stories, so like, but was he good though? No. <laughs> no. Um, oh my gosh, I need to put my phone on silent. Okay. 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 All right. So I'll start from the beginning because we have time. We're on live stream. We have time for this. Um, buckle in, friends. So this was... This was like not recent. This was like last summer, I think, right? I don't know, what's time? Um, anyway, so I met this guy on Hinge um, and 
So we match, we like, you know, we talk back and forth, whatever, seem fine. And then we were like, okay, let's meet up. Let's get, let's get, uh, grab drinks. Like, okay, sure. Um, we exchange phone numbers cause it's just easier to coordinate plans. Like when, um, via text message, I find than on the app. Cause I don't have like push notifications on there. So I was like, you know, whatever. Um, and I am always trying to like, I usually like to try to compromise like on location of where to go and also just helps narrow down like where to go. Like obviously I don't tell them where I live exactly, but um, you know, I'm like, oh, like what neighborhood you are you in? Like, um, or where do you work? Whatever, so that we can like find somewhere to meet in the middle. And he gave me the neighborhood that he lived in or where, where he worked or whatever. And I was like, okay, like, how about we meet at this bar or whatever? And I picked something, you know, that was cool. Had like a, a cool like rooftop porch um, or balcony or whatever. Um, you know, trying to be mindful of like, yeah, pick a cool place if we're, you know, gonna hang out there. And, and then he was like, oh, actually, how about this one instead? And I was like, I mean, okay, sure, why not? Um, definitely a downgrade, in my opinion, in terms of, like, interesting bar, but I was like, whatever, I've never been here before, so fine. And in my mind, like, if we, you know, when we set, we set the time, we set the place, like, whatever, like, we don't need to, like, keep any kind of, we don't have to, like, keep going back and forth, because I feel like, you know, you just want to meet the person um, face to face. And so I was like, okay, cool. Like, see you then. And then like, we, we weren't even the, like in the middle of talking or anything, but I think this was like the night before the date. He just tries to call me, um, like at 8 PM or something. And I'm like, why are you trying to call me? I was like, it was so weird to me. Um, and I've talked about this to like a, a number of different friends and like, most people are like, oh yeah, no, like don't just call people out of the blue, especially someone you've never met before. Um, like I'm a millennial. Okay. Like don't call me out of the blue. Um, especially if I don't know you yet. Um, so I ignored the phone call. Um, cause I was like, I don't know what to do about this. And then he like immediately after I like ignored the phone call, he texted and he was like, oh yeah, don't worry. Um, or don't mind me. I just like to phone people out of the blue. I'm like, and I'm just, you know, I haven't met this person yet. We've already set a date. I'm like, it's okay. Like I, I'm just like not really a spontaneous phone call kind of person. So that should have been, that was like the first little like signifier of like, this might be, hmm, I don't know about this guy. But anyway, I go on the date anyways and I get there and I text him and I'm like, hey, I'm here. And I didn't like, it was like a pretty empty bar. So I was just like, I don't think he's here. Um, so then I get a text and he's like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm almost there or whatever. So he arrives and, um, he looked uh, a little different from what I imagined from the photos, which, you know, that happens fine. So we sit down, we're, we grab a drink and we're chatting and he's like way too touchy, like right off the bat. And I'm just like, Mm, I feel like you really need to like ease into that kind of stuff. And also I feel like I need to like signal to you in some way that I'm okay with that. But he was just like already like a little bit too touchy right off the bat, which again, I should have known, should have known. Um, I've been waiting for a live stream since that video so I can ask. I'm so glad you remembered. Um, yes. Uh, and then I was already like, there was like so many things. Like I remember he said that he... Um, he's been, he had been like at a new job, like every year, like he just like some kind of coincidence of things would happen and he was always just at a new job all the time. And I'm like, Hmm, that's interesting. Um, which I feel like, um, did you have a date with the guy on the Zatarin's rice box? Wait, what is that? Wait, I need to Google that right now. What is that? <laughs> I've no. Is it? Uh, 
What is that? Oh no, none of these are showing me a guy on the box. Um, okay, but yeah, so... Yeah, he, he said that he was, like, constantly, like, getting a new job or whatever, and I was like, that's kind of weird, but whatever, fine. Things happen, I guess. And honestly, I just, I don't really know. I was like... This was, I remember this was like my first date. The commercial used to be a black guy who played the sax. Oh God. <laughs> oh, they're probably friends. <laughs> Maybe. Um, anyway, so I was like, uh, this was like, I remember this was like my first date um, kind of in a while. So I was just like kind of, um, just curious, I guess. I feel like in the grand scheme of things, I stuck this date out way longer than I should have. Anyway, so we had one drink and the the waitress um, or our server comes over and she's like, oh, do you want um, another drink or do you want food? Um, and then he, the date, he was like, uh, actually, um, I'll grab, I'll grab the bill. And I'm like, oh, okay, he's ending the date early. I was like, cool, that's fine, all right. Um, and then, uh, and he was like, let's, let's go to another location. And I was like, oh, okay. I was like, yeah, fair. Cause like this bar that you chose, I was like, kind of not that exciting. So yeah, let's find a different place. And he's like, oh yeah, I know a place. I was like, okay. So we settle the bill, we leave and he immediately just like turns next door and then starts entering the building. And I'm like, this, this is a residential building. This is a home. This is not another bar. And I was like, is this your, do you live here? Is your apartment? And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, my brain is just like, oh my God. I was like, this guy picked a bar that's at the bottom of his building and he probably didn't even come down until I texted him that I was there. Like the bare minimum, just bare minimum. And clearly had like everything, like he already had plans of how this was gonna go. Yeah, red flag number two. Yeah, exactly, oh no, I know, right? Terrible, bad, 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 bad. So anyone who's like currently dating or on the dating scene, like learn from, learn, learn from the mistakes, okay? Um, <laughs> bad. Um, oh God, the horror, I know, right? And I like literally, I stopped in my tracks and when I, when he was like, yeah, this is my apartment and I was like, and I, you know, I am, I am an adult now. I know. I was like, this is such a bad idea. I was like, this, the date should have ended right there. I should have been like, you know what? I don't feel comfortable with that. I'm going to go home. Like, and I was already like, not really interested in this guy. So I was just like, I should have just did that, honestly. But the curiosity and just the absolute chaos of my brain pattern at that moment in time, I was just like, you know what? I think part of it is like when you when you spend so much time getting ready and you like leave your house and whatever and it was summertime and I'm just like oh, oh how did you get oh my god you guys <laughs> I love that everyone knows I love you guys all know you all know you know the signs it's bad um anyway I made a poor decision and I went inside the apartment anyway um the, like sunk cost fallacy I know it's so bad, right? Um, okay, uh, for those of you who um, didn't like listen to the video, nothing bad happened. I like I came out fully unscathed. Nothing, literally nothing happened. Um, I did get free wine though, and a funny story to tell after the fact. So you know. Anyway, so we get into the apartment. He goes. He gives me a tour of um, his apartment. And I, curiosity, Tina, I'm so glad you're not a cat. Was he at least cute? No, no, he wasn't. Um, not in my opinion anyway, not my type. Um, this guy sounds slimy, yeah, it's bad. Um, and so he shows me the apartment. I'm like very, very pointedly trying to avoid going anywhere near his bedroom. Um, and so I was like, all right, let's, let's, you know, let's drink this, this 
you know, whatever liquor you have for me to, for my consolation of uh, enduring this evening. Um, <laughs> so we crack open a bottle of wine. Oh, okay. Here's, here's the, ins this is how it starts. This is how it starts. Again, I made, I'm, I've made many mistakes already, but he had, I'm enjoying this. <laughs> Good. <laughs> um, so we were, yeah. So he shows me the apartment. He has a keyboard. Um, and I'm like, oh, like, do you play, like, do you, you know, oh, do you play me? You're into music, blah, blah. Up until this point, by the way, guys, he has not mentioned music at all. Like, he has not mentioned his interest in music at all. Nowhere on his profile did he talk about music, as far as I remember. Like, anyway. So I was like, oh, okay, cool. Like, I was like, you know, just trying to make conversation at this point. Um, and he was like, oh, I used to take singing lessons when I was a kid. And I was like, oh, okay, that's cool. And then I was like, uh, I was like, all right, let's, let's get into this wine. Did you at least get food? No, we didn't get food. Honestly, I'm fine with that. <laughs> Um, cause I feel like if we got food, that would make the date even longer. I mean, this date was already longer than it should have been, but anyway, um, <laughs> and then we, yeah. So then, I don't know. We're just talking about random stuff and then somehow, yeah, we come back around to music and he was like oh yeah I'm really into jazz and I'm like oh that's cool I'm like that's not really a genre that I listen to and normally I feel like people would just be like okay that's cool and then we can move on um but then he felt the need to like play this song by a, an artist that he really really loved and um <laughs> his vocal coach must have been trina from victorious <laughs> um so he puts the song on and i'm like okay so i like listen to a chunk of it and i'm like oh yeah it's beautiful blah blah and then he like pauses the music and i was like oh Oh, it's gonna be one of those things. I'm like, we have to sit in silence and listen to the whole song without talking. And I'm like, that's so awkward. Um, and it was like an eight minute song or something. Like it was a long song. <laughs> and then anyway, we listened to the song and I'm just like, okay, that's cool. And then he's like, oh yeah, I like saw his, uh, I saw him perform live. I bought an album and he signed it. And he's like, bring it and showing it to me and blah, blah. I'm like, okay, uh, cool, whatever. I'm like, get. this guy is clearly really into jazz, but he has not, uh, and he's like very excited about it. And like, normally, you know, like if I'm actually interested in someone and people are, if I'm, you know, and someone's really excited about something, like, I'll, I'll let them be excited. But you know, as we know, the boat girl, not Bohemian Rhapsody. <laughs> At least Bohemian Rhapsody is like very dynamic. Um, I mean, I'm sure the song wasn't that bad. I don't really remember it that well, but uh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad I caught the live. I was also able to buy some of your brushes, and I'm so excited to try them. It's definitely making me feel motivated to work on my art again. Yay! I'm so glad. Thank you. Um, oh my god, this guy. Imagine all the poor girls he's done this with too. I know. He probably has this whole. He probably. Yeah. It's probably. Anyway, it's so funny that you're jumping in right now because I'm literally like, uh, I 80 purchased. Yay! Thanks, guys. Um, yes. Yeah, so apologies to everyone who's who anyone who's just jumping in right now. I'm uh, I'm talking about a really bad date that I went on. Very memorable, for sure. But uh, that's what we're talking about right now. In case anyone's like, what is going on? Um, Tina, you are so strong for sitting through all this. <laughs> I the problem is. Uh, and the reason why I was in this situation is because I have a really hard time saying no, and I have a really hard time uh, being confrontational. Again, nothing, nothing happened on this day, thank God. Um, but um, yeah, so clearly this guy is super into jazz, and I'm trying my best to be as nice as possible. Um, but I'm like, you know, people people some people just don't know how to read the room it's like we gotta find common ground here like if if you're really excited about this thing that's cool but you, we gotta like move on right 
Um, sorry for the whoop whoop, blood sugars are configuring. Aww. <laughs> no worries, I'm excited that you're excited. Um, so, I. Uh, Again, I'm like, I'm really, I don't think I'm prompt. I'm not prompting. I don't think I was truly prompting all this jazz stuff. He just, he just sort of like continued to go on this, this, uh, this route. Um, and yeah, this was the, this was the, um, grand finale as, uh, uh, I guess he pulls out sheet music, printed sheet music, um, and like we're just sitting at like a like a island like a kitchen island um he pulls out sheet music printed sheet music puts it in front of me like and literally starts singing jazz music not prompted no mu like acapella acapella like not even using the keyboard and is like like as if i'm a child is like pointing out the words that he's singing to me on the sheet music like oh like he's like standing like over my my shoulder and i'm just sitting there like is this real life right now like what is happening and i'm just like <laughs> chunking this wine <laughs> being like what is going on <laughs> how would you rate his performance <laughs> Honestly, I don't even remember. I just, the whole time, I'm just like, this is the cringiest thing that has ever happened to me. Maybe a six out of 10. Uh, mm, that's mm, maybe a five. I don't know. <laughs> like he wasn't like the worst possible singer I've ever heard. Um, but just like all of these you know, leading up to this moment, just all these compounded together. Like, I feel like if you heard him at karaoke, like randomly, you'd be like, oh, okay, like, mm, all right. He's like, fine. Um, but like, bruh, acapella, the sheet music, like completely unprompted, um, insanity. Um, five you are a saint for that i wish to have that level of confidence i know right like i want to live in that kind of delusion <laughs> girl you're better than me i can't hide what i'm thinking my face says it all and i would have been trying to leave just based off this the train of women he's traumatized, I imagine. Y'all need to find each other and share stories. <laughs> I know. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Um, Delulu is the Salulu. Yeah, for real. Like I just, that it, it truly is a, a, a level of confidence I will never know. Um, I swear, neurodi neurodivergent men and neurodivergent women are completely different species because I would not be able to get away with that shit. <laughs> yeah, because I'm sure you're like still a well-adjusted human being. Um, so yeah, so he finished his song and I think I don't even remember how I reacted. <laughs> um, I think I might have like did like the softest of claps, like softest of pity claps, and then I think I went to the bathroom immediately, and then I came out of the bathroom, and I was like, "So, what's the worst date you've ever been on?" <laughs> <laughs> And then he proceeded to uh, tell me about, you know, a date that he had been on. <laughs> yeah. Um, I would like someone to do a dramatic reenactment of this. I feel like it could be like an SNL skit or something. Or, you know what? It, it's like an episode of Seinfeld. <laughs> Couldn't it? It could be an episode of Seinfeld. No, you didn't. 
I am the worst date. No. No. Um, so what did you learn? I learned do not go into a man's apartment on the first date. Do not. Don't do that. Um, yeah, so we finished the wine. And when that was when the wine was finished, I was like, yeah, I don't need to be here anymore. Uh, and that was like an easy exit. I was like, all right, done the wine. I'm gonna go now. And he's like, oh, I'll walk you home. And I was like, mm, no, it's okay. And then, but at the same time, it's just like, I wouldn't have clapped. I just stared at him and like, you done now? <laughs> that question was bold. I was feeling a little bold. It was the, it was the alcohol, I'm sure. Um, I'm just imagining you standing there like, oh, wow. <laughs> oh my gosh. But yeah, it's Toronto. It was late. So I was like, okay, fine. Like, I'll let him walk me a little bit. So he walked me like a couple blocks and I was like, okay, we should part ways now. Um, but yeah, oh my gosh. And then afterwards, after the date, he was like sending me memes and stuff, and I was like, uh, yeah, we need to, we need to not, not do this anymore. But yeah, anyway, <laughs> thanks for listening in. Not surprised he didn't take the hint though. <laughs> Were they jazz memes? <laughs> no, actually. <gasps> oh my God. I forgot, I also forgot to mention when he was walking me home or like wa wa walking me part of the way, he was singing, he started singing. Um, he was like, he's, he, was, he just started to break out into song. And I was just like, this isn't Glee, stop this madness. Anyway, um, guy thought it went successfully. Were they? Uh, <laughs> Like, I am morbidly cautious about sharing my interests with anyone. I, um, other, to make it crystal clear that they have any interest. Yeah, probably pat himself on the back after he got home. Um, that's the thing, is like, I, I don't want people to, like, I'm, I'm all for being really passionate about the things that you love. I feel like I am an example of that. You know, I'm constantly talking about anime and uh, K-pop and being feral about the things that I'm interested in, but you do have to have like a certain level of consideration for the person or people that you're interacting with, especially on a one-on-one -on -one date, especially a first date. Like you really like, you know, read, read the room, read the room. <laughs> <laughs> man thought he was living in a musical for real <laughs> he was having his amy adams and enchanted moment oh my god yeah and like again it's like all these things compounded i've broken out into song i've broken out into song like during our live streams um i've broken out into song with friends all the time but again it's just like reading the room um uh and understanding the situation. <laughs> um, and again, like all the things like leading up to it, I wasn't endeared to this person because it was very clear that he just like wanted to get me into his apartment. Um, bro, I thought he was Troy Bolton. I'm betting, <laughs> bet on it, bet on it. Oh my God. High School Musical, Chef's Kiss, so fun. Um, yeah. Yeah, well, okay, you know what's really fascinating about this? Um, man, <laughs> the emotional intelligence of a walnut. I think, I think he just was extremely confident and operated however he wanted, regardless of who he was with, I'm assuming. Um, so what's really interesting about this is, so as I'm like, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna like, 
let's part ways now. I'm like, you know, I don't want, I didn't want him to know where I lived. So I was like, basically just being like, okay, you've walked me far enough. Um, and he was like, okay. He's like, um, he's like, so basically what's interesting is he was like, you know what? Um, I would be down to hang out with you again. But what if we did like a group hangout? He was like, what if we, like I invited my single friends, you invited your single friends and we had like a group thing. So it was interesting because like, he, so it sounds like he knew that he had like some self-awareness that like we weren't gonna be an item, like we weren't gonna be a thing, but he was like still interested in uh, he was hoping to find someone to sing along with him. Yeah, exactly. So he was like, maybe I'll try and figure, I don't know. Or maybe this was like his way of having a second date, but it being like lower stakes. Um, or, or just trying to like date one of my friends, you know, whatever. I don't know. And again, me being non-confrontational -conf and just like not knowing how to say no. I was like, uh, yeah, sure. Okay. Mm. Even though, like, in the back of my mind, I knew, I was like, I'm gonna get out of this later. Um, but, anyway, so I was just like, whatever, I'll just say, sure, maybe, I don't know, sure, and then just, like, peace out. Anyway, and then after that, he was sending me memes, and, like, yeah, just, like, trying to communicate with me, or whatever, in, like, a casual manner, and I just, like, finally had to be like, hey, like... I know you had mentioned a second hangout or whatever, but honestly, I just really don't see this. Uh, uh, I don't know. Basically, I just told him, you know, in a night, very, very nice way that like, I just wasn't interested in seeing him again, ever again, like ever again, in any capacity. Um, and then he had some kind of butt hurt reply. And then I just left it at that. <laughs> He's not used to hearing no. That's rude to walnuts. Uh, my dates never went too far. I've always been very matter of fact. I learned early not to waste my time. Might have been even called a name because of that. Honestly though, like, yeah, that's better. That is a much better way to operate because it's just more efficient and you're, yeah, you're just being realistic with like what you're looking for. Um, it's unfortunate that people have been, you know, rude about it, but yeah, you're, you're doing everyone, everyone a favor. Like not just you, but you're doing them a favor too if you know that it's just not gonna work. Ladies, remember to say no more often. Yes, 100%. That's honestly, like that is the, like when we boil down this crazy date, um, ah, probably fancy, <laughs> fancied himself a nice guy. Mm-hmm, oh yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so end of the day, the story, the, the, the moral of the story is to say no and trust your instincts because <laughs> my instincts knew there were so many flags. There were so many signs. Milady, <laughs> he kind of looks like that. He did kind of remind, he did kind of have that. <laughs> he had the audacity to be butthurt after what he put you through. <laughs> okay. Also, I do want to say, I just want to re like, I just want to uh, stress. He bro had a circus of red flags. <laughs> yeah. I want to, I do want to, oh God, Tina. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. His profile photos and what he looked like in person different vibes different vibes girl it wasn't just flags it was banners <laughs> it was a tent it was a whole circus tent um so <laughs> what i wanted to say i i want to make sure that all of you know if you're on a date if you're dating do not like do not minimize yourself. Like if you're really, if you're excited about something, if you, if there's like a topic or whatever that you're really passionate about, like clearly this guy was passionate about singing and jazz music and whatever, like be passionate, like be your true authentic self. But 
read the room. <laughs> like, I think for me, I've definitely, you know, come uh, any, like literally any interaction where like, you know, I start like, if I catch myself going on a tangent about something um, and realize that the other person is not nearly as feral about that same topic, like, you know, just like, you just gotta find that common ground of what the other person is also into. Cause I, I feel like I've definitely heard of people saying that they don't wanna come off too strong or they don't wanna talk about this because it's embarrassing or whatever, but like, you know, be, be, be like, be excited, be passionate about the things you want to be passionate about. But obviously like I, you know, as, as we, as I uh, retold this story, there was obviously a lot of other things going on with this guy. <laughs> be passionate, but be considerate of others too. Exactly. Um, did you tell him that you were an artist and YouTuber and heard your guy's bad date story. Oh my god, have you seen that red flag TikTok guy? He has a bunch of different... Yes! The red flag TikTok guy is so funny. It's so funny. Um, I know exactly what you're talking about. He like runs around with this huge flag. Um, I feel like I definitely would have talked about being a full-time artist because like that's hard to avoid, like of course, um, but I'm pretty sure I, if I'm remember correctly I didn't give him my handle at all I hope <laughs> um because yeah um I would not want uh this guy to have any way of contacting me or seeing me ever again um oh my god I get along with the my lady type of guys because I love performative reading but not well kidnapped <laughs> and totally like they're like that type of guy like they're not all bad obviously and the um, like I, I actually went to college with a guy kind of like that and he was like super super endearing and nice and totally harmless um he just yeah he just liked you know putting on character impersonations and stuff and he was like perfectly perfectly nice um but again there was a lot of other things compounded with this, uh, with this particular guy I went on a date with. Uh, sounds like the guy didn't even ask about your interests. You know what? That's probably, that's probably exactly why I don't even recall if I talked about my career and stuff that much with him and probably why I never gave him my Instagram because yeah, something I've noticed um, <laughs> being in the dating scene uh, is that yeah, a lot of times guys don't ask you shit. Um, <laughs> he held you hostage just so he could live his musical dreams. Exactly. 100%. I could have been anyone. Like I could have literally been anyone. He just, that's what I mean by like, he just operated exactly the way that he just wanted to. He didn't think about like, is this person even interested in listening to me sing jazz music? No, he was just like, I want to sing jazz music and I'm going to do it. <laughs> like delusion, delusion and so much confidence. Imagine me doing that while you were telling us that story. <laughs> I think this shows how bad your people pleasing was. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, 100%. So bad. It's really bad. That's actually a really perfect example of it. Um, I've talked about this before, um, but yeah, I've, I, I'm very, very bad for uh, being like a chronicle people pleaser to a detriment a lot of the times. And that's like a perfect example of it because I don't like confrontation. Um, I have our time saying no. Um, <laughs> So anyway, I've learned, I've learned, <laughs> but at the end of the day, came out with a really funny story to tell. <laughs> I relate. Aww. We, we need to support, start a support group. 
We, we're better. We can be better, Chanel. We'll get better at this. <laughs> he wanted you to be the Sandy to his Danny, but his Danny couldn't sing. <laughs> yeah. You know what's so funny? I love musicals, but I did not volunteer to be in a musical that day. <laughs> I don't know if you're familiar with Moist Critical. That is the craziest name. Um, but he's been on a binge of dunking on guys like this. That sounds hilarious. Um, I love that. It does give, uh, it's unfortunate, but I do think that there is a lot to be valued in other guys being the ones to be critical of this kind of behavior because unfortunately, especially this type of guy, they're not going to listen to women complain about it, but they will be more willing to change if they hear other guys dunking on it or complaining about it or criticizing it. That's just the way it works, unfortunately, but that is good. <laughs> Recovering people pleasers group. Yeah, <laughs> I should make that into a patch or something. <laughs> Recovering people pleaser. I saw a tweet and it was like, people pleasers be like, I'm in my villain era, except they're just setting boundaries. <laughs> Me. Me. I have permanent indentations from being a doormat, but I'm totally over that from the last few years. Got no time for avoiding hurting pe feelings. I still do with people like my little bro though. Good for you. I know it's very hard. It is really hard to kind of break out of those habits and obviously I think there will always be exceptions um but and it'll never be perfect you know um it's always a journey but I believe in us I believe in us I feel bad for the guy he's probably blissfully ignorant about his behavior <laughs> That is the thing too, right? Like I, in a way, like me not being honest, um, like during the date is doing him and every other girl he dates a disservice because how exactly, like how is he to know that he shouldn't behave like this if no one tells him? Uh, but at the same time, I'm just like, I should also not be responsible for fixing this man's behavior. So you know oh have you thought more about your youtube memberships oh yes i had that i thought about that again today um i feel like i'll try I'm trying to figure out when's a good time to squeeze that in maybe maybe during the holidays since i'm not really doing anything um <laughs> i do want to do that though um youtube memberships um, it'll just be like for the little badges and like emojis or something. It'll be like very, um, bare, very minimal, but yes, that is something that I want to give more thought to. It's just, again, I'm like trying to figure out what to prioritize, but yes, thank you for the reminder. So what you're saying is men dunking on other men for being creepy are doing a public service. Yes. 100%, 100%. Uh, oh my God, that's me. Everyone sees me as a villain now, but I'm just legit setting boundaries. That's all That's all it is. You just need to set boundaries um, and do what's you know right for you. And it can come off like that if you've, um, if you've always been super people pleasing, right? And obviously like the, there's a way to set boundaries too, like still be courteous and kind and respect other people's boundaries as well. But yeah, it's just, just gotta happen sometimes. Um, what iPad do you use? I have, uh, I actually just got a new one recently. Um, so prior to, I had like a really old, well not really old, but I had an iPad pro from like 2018 or something. Um, and then I, sold it to my friend because it was still in like great condition but i it was like it was the one where i was still using the old apple uh, apple pencil and the my friend had been wanting 
to get an iPad, but she, you know, she just wanted it for fun. She didn't really need anything special. Um, and so I was like, I've been meaning to upgrade anyway. So like, let's do a swap or whatever, not a swap, but like I sold her my old one. So now I have a newer one. Um, it is an iPad pro. I got it used. Um, like I bought a refurbished one, which makes it cheaper. And, um, yeah, it's the, not the biggest one. I think it's like the 11 inch or something like that. Um, but yeah. I literally just got a new iPad too, two days ago. Oh my God, yay! Isn't it so fun? Ugh, the iPad is amazing. It honestly, yeah. Oh, that hair shine is giving. Hee <laughs> thank you. I know, finally doing more painting. <laughs> that is literally me right now. I've dialed back my people pleasing and all the people, mostly guys, who have benefited from overstepping my boundaries are calling me a psycho now. So interesting, right? You see people's true colors. Anyway, I hope that we all enjoyed my worst date story time. <laughs> I know it was long, but I, as I said, it was long. Uh, and I loved, I loved all of our real, all your real time reactions to it. <laughs> Happy to be single because I don't need guys trying to push my boundaries. Absolutely. Nobody needs that. Yes, single life forever. Thanks for sharing, Tina. I'm glad. <laughs> I'm glad you enjoyed. Uh, hey, maybe don't say hurtful things or harass me. Them. You used to be cool. What happened? Ugh. Cut them out. You you don't need that. Hubby got me my new iPad and Apple Pencil. I love it. Again, I need to do 15 to 40 minutes daily for digital art. Aw, yay! That's so nice of them. I made one digital art piece and haven't tried ever since. I mean... The beauty of digital art, it's that will not expire. You can do, you can come back to it anytime. No rush on that. We're going to do more fun sparkles because of course we are. The, oh, used to be so cool. Such a lame excuse. Ugh, yeah. Lame. Uh, this is so cute. Will it be used for a sticker or anything or just experimenting? I'm uh, also, I'm loving seeing the retro spin on your style. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm like obsessed with this like retro shoujo style right now. Um, I, this technically is um, a recreation, I guess, of a sticker design I did earlier in the year. So these were uh, a Patreon um, sticker set that I did, which technically is available on my Patreon secret shop. So I just sort of like use this as a reference point um, for today and I'm like, yeah, people are like really into her. So I'm not really sure what, what uh, I don't have any plans, but um, except I want to do the bunny on this. So at, at best, I think, or at most, I'll probably just sell this little original, but I'll definitely scan them in case maybe I make, maybe I make new stickers, perhaps. Um, we'll see how the bunny one turns out. <laughs> but I'm glad that, um, happy to hear about people, people um, enjoying it. 
Digital art for me is like learning art all over again. I, digital is hard. Um, I actually find like when I try attempt to do like proper illustrations with digital art, it's like such a, yeah, it is like a new learning curve for real. You should name her. Oh yeah, that's true. I have not given names to these characters. I keep creating, I keep creating new characters and then we're like, we should name her. And I'm like, true. Um, we, that's a good, and I, I would want it to be a set, right? Like the, the bunny and the cat girl. Shall we name them? They do kind of give Nana and Hachi vibes a little bit, or uh, another comparison was um, uh, Kuromi and My Melody. <laughs> it's kind of that. Kiki, oh my god, Kiki is a cute name. Good night, all, goodbye, Tina. Oh, bye, thanks for coming. Enjoy your cake and cookies. It's funny going uh, back and forth between digital art though, because I've done the zoom in thing on paper. <laughs> That's when I realized I need to take a break, right? And you're like, deet, 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 deet. <laughs> Why do I feel like all women and femmes have heard that excuse before? Ain't that the truth? Name the bunny Usagi. <laughs> True. That would be, that would be very, very uh, apt, Usagi and Neko. I'm struggling so hard to learn how to color my digital art. Aw, I believe in you. Um, I don't know if you've tried the Max Pack retro brushes before. Um, I've heard a lot of people really, really like them. For Procreate anyway, I'm not sure what um, program you're using. Oh cool, I had to unsubscribe from Patreon, but I may need to join again to grab those stickers. I hope you're able to do the bunny again too. It's interesting to see the differences. Thank you so much. Um, yes, I definitely plan to do the bunny as well, for sure. Oh yeah, Mits Mitzi. Oh, Mitzi's cute too. I, I my brain want to say Mitski because of the, the singer. Uh, Raven, I've learned layers, layers, and layers, more layers is the best way to learn and help you be less stressed while learning. Mm, yes, 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 true. Because then you're like not committed or like you can go back. Kiki, Mitsi, Usagi. Cute, cute. Oh, yesterday I made a huge batch of soup, so that will be my dinner tonight. I love, love having leftovers so I don't have to cook. So good. Um, just the most magical thing. I'm like personally not a huge fan of cooking, but obviously I do it out of necessity. Kanin and Kot, cute. Mitsi is pretty adorable as well. Mitsi should be the bunny. Kiki, ah, Kiki and Mitsi. <laughs> that actually sounds so cute. Oh, what kind of soup? That makes me think it sounds like a good time to make taco soup again. Oh, I made, um, it's, it's like, it's like a, a lighter version of like the loaded baked potato soup that people often do. So the, the one that I made, it's like potato, cauliflower, cheese, and corn. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's like all my favorite things. 
<laughs> blended into one. I used to like transfer it into a blender and it was like so time consuming, but then I finally got an immersion blender, like a stick one, and it has like changed my life. It's <laughs> so much easier. <laughs> hello, hello, welcome, welcome. I might... Oh, that's really cute. Kiki and Mitzi. That's really cute, like, for the two of them. I like that they're, like, similar sounding, but not exact. The struggle when you don't like cooking, but you love to have nice food. Exactly! right it is a struggle and dishes oh, so annoying um oh chicken tortilla soup with avocado is so bomb oh my god i have i bought a i bought a bag of avocados the other day because i was like oh they're super on sale and then i re re forgot about them today and like now they're all ripe and i'm like oh no um so i threw a few of them in the fridge hopefully they're okay but i need to eat them like asap Aw, uh, what if their names were Mitzi and Kitsi, but their nicknames were Mimi and Kiki? Oh my god, that's so cute! So cute! Uh, Kanin being bunny in Norwegian and not being cat in Russian. Oh, that's cute! Highly recommend checking out Budget Bites Swamp Soup. It's a tomato soup and it's great with cheese curds melted in. Oh my god, you know what's so... I love that you mentioned that because I'm pretty positive I follow Budget Bites on Instagram. <laughs> so I've definitely, I haven't done that particular recipe, but I've definitely, um, I'm sure I've done some of their recipes before. What if they were like villains slash bad guys and their aliases were Yusagi and Neko? Ooh, yeah, like um, it kind of reminds me of a uh, uh, miraculous ladybug, like Chat Noir. <laughs> Mimi and Kiki is an adorable idea. I like how Tina barely mentions we should name them and we all just do it for in seconds. You guys are awesome. I love it. I'm just gonna grab my paint marker. Oops. Oh, this has been touching. That's why. Sorry about the shaky cam. Honestly, you guys are better at it than I am with the names, I think. It's very helpful to crowdsource. <laughs> Mimi and Kiki. Oh, it's so cute. And then I even have a character named Momo. They all just kind of sound the, like, oh, it is adorable. Okay, white paint marker action here. I love that I was actually able to finish something from start to finish during the live stream. Like that doesn't happen very often. And it's like way more satisfying to do so. I'm very happy with that. Very pleased, very pleased indeed. Kiki and Mimi are 100% part of Momo's gang. <gasps> oh my god! They're like her henchmen, their little henchmen, her little like her right and left hand man. Oh my god. Girls that are cute and evil are the scariest kind of villains I should know. I have a little sister. <laughs> Oh my god. Did you ever name the knight and princess? I did actually. Um, that was also uh, partly helped by you guys. So, um, 
they are the reason why the paintbrushes look like this, by the way, um, part, part, partly, um, because the characters um, are blue and pink. And so the paper, and then that's why I made the packaging so they all match together. Um, so I had the idea to name the princess Buttercup because of um, me putting her in a yellow dress. And it kind of reminded me of like, um, the Princess Bride, like the princess in The Princess Bride is named Buttercup, which I just thought was cute. Um, and then I think when I painted The Night, I was asking you guys for names. And then people mentioned Aster because, so Buttercup is a flower, a yellow flower. And then Aster is like a bluish purple flower. And so that's what we went with. And I really like it. I just like the parallel too of like them both being named by flowers and the color scheme and stuff. So yes, that's the story with that. Um, very fun. Oh my God, would love to see a group drawing of the three of them. <laughs> I think I have to now. Um, the only downside, I the only downside is the bunny character has pink hair and so does Momo. So that's like, for me, like, it's kind of a shame that I'm like so attached to pink hair because now there's so much overlap. Even Buttercups has pink hair too. Like, why am I like this? They're all, they all have pink hair. Um, so like, it's more interesting to me as like a group if they all look distinctly different from each other. So I might have to reevaluate maybe the bunny character's hair color, perhaps. Like Momo for sure has to have pink hair. Um, different shades of pink. Yeah, I might have to do that. I might have to do, yes. I think it'll have to be, maybe, you know what I could do for the bunny character? Maybe I can swap, I can make her hat pink and then her hair blue like the light blue and swap it maybe, maybe, um, or different tones. Yeah, we could do different tones of pink. I obviously favor like baby pink. Um, I think, and the pink is nice cause it like looks cute with this character cause it's purple. This is my favorite part of the creative process, collaboration, corroboration, and Jasmine stories. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, retelling that story to you guys was so fun. Um, you guys had the best reactions. Mimi definitely has a cat. Um, uh, Mimi has a cat of nine tails whip like Catwoman. Ah, <gasps> yes. Oh my god. And like they, the, 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 I could like make the little headpiece like latex with the whip. Oh, that'd be so fun. Or what about a periwinkle would fit the color palette, I think. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Like swapping like for the design, like making her hair, yeah, the periwinkle and then the hat pink so that she still has pink within the design. Um, that is definitely a possibility. Ooh, should we try that right now? Hold on. I mean, she's like basically done. So, ta-da, very cute. Oh, gouache is so satisfying, like how matte it is. I love, ooh. Okay, that's... <laughs> Digital art time, apparently. Okay, let's. What if her hair was a pink to red tip fade, but it's not a fashion choice. It's from un. Uh, it's from murder. <laughs> oh my god, I love it. Uh, also, but I do like that idea of giving her hair color a gradient, because um, that would definitely be a point of difference, and then I could still keep the pink. Um, okay, so let's try. Let's try the pink swap, pink to blue swap. So let's see, right? If we went like this and then the hat, oh, oh that's cute too. Oh my gosh. That's pretty cute. That's pretty cute. I just know the bunny has explosive stuffed animals. Oh my god, I love that. Chucking chucking dynamite, but they're in uh, stuffies. T.Y. Beanie Babies, to be exact. This is cute too. Um, let me let me just grab her the illustration that I did. I 
really like that. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so this was, so now you can actually see the stickers. Um, so this was February's Patreon reward, which I actually still love. Um, I really, really enjoyed this um, print. Oh yeah, I now I, remember, <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> Her hair didn't end up being purple. It's like a black, it's like black basically. Uh, like a dark, that ended up being a dark brown as opposed to a purple. Um, I guess like the character designs are slightly, slightly different, which, you know, I was just playing around. I didn't have intentions of these being like Momo's friends or whatever. Um, but uh, the, like the cat looks like she could kill you, but is a cinnamon roll. And the bunny looks like a cinnamon roll, but could kill you. <laughs> <laughs> I love I love that um that audio on TikTok and people using it. It's so fun. Anyway, so this was the sticker design. Um I accidentally made them slightly different sizes, which drove me crazy, but it happens. Um and then this was the print, which I really, really enjoyed. Um maybe save the gradient hair for future characters. Um I do like the idea of gradient hair. It's very um it is very fun. Um, I guess the, the the difference with this character as well is she has longer hair, whereas Momo's hair is like short. But I did paint them the same hair color, the same shade of pink. Um, I really like the blue and pink with the gradient. Um, yes, you can. Uh, like, can you hold Mr. Stuffy for me? <laughs> Walks away, unsuspecting victim, to paint the town crimson and boom. <laughs> I love, I love all the narratives right now. You guys are so creative. Anyway, um, hmm, you guys have got me thinking. You guys got me thinking. Um, it's hard to, I guess cause, because I've done the illust like this illustration, it's hard to like uh, move away from the, from the pink, but this is really cute too, like this, oops this that um the the swapped color scheme it does make her look totally different but i mean i wasn't even intending to give these characters names or anything but now we're all attached kiki and mimi stand forever <laughs> i really like the blue and pink with the gradient it's cute hmm okay well we will we will have to experiment Another idea, potentially, perhaps, because I didn't even make her hair purple. It actually ended up being, uh, like the sticker is purple, but the, the hair is not, it's like brown. So another idea could be that her hair, maybe I don't make it pink pink, maybe it's like, like a softer brown, like a caramel color. That's an option too, let me see. So it's like similar, but not exact. <gasps> That's cute too, actually. Like a more peach is as opposed to like a bubblegum pink. Oh yeah, if we go, yeah, if we go slightly darker, So she's like almost a ginger. That's kind of cute too, actually. <gasps> Ooh, I like that. Someone, someone is an, <laughs> someone is an animation. I need the screen, the scenes ASAP. <laughs> Aster, Buttercrop, Momo, and now Mimi and Kiki and their cool backstories. I love that we created a whole Tina-verse. <laughs> I know, what? I This is so fun though. I don't even have, I'm not even a storyteller, but I like the ideas that we're creating here. A ginger with a taste for blood. <laughs> have to take off for dinner, but thanks for the long stream. Enjoy the company while sketching earlier and cooking. Yay, enjoy dinner. The Tina-verse is a verse I need to live in. I mean, the Tinaverse would be very aesthetic, that's for sure. <laughs> I think this actually might be a fun compromise. I feel like um, it's 
close, like it's different, but it's still closer to the original design. The blue was really cute too, but I think in terms of, um, and then it kind of complements if the, this character has brown hair. So then it's just like a light, light brown, dark brown. Tinaverse <laughs> or Wonderverse, perhaps. The Wonderverse. <laughs> the I'm a Wonderverse. And actually it's interesting because I had already made her face this in these like peachy tones anyway. So like it feels very harmonious actually. Um, which uh, speaking of my original characters um, or like original character designs, I've mentioned this before to Alston actually uh, that I want to at some point, hopefully in the near future, maybe at the beginning of next year, um, to do a character design contest where you guys design a villain or like a frenemy for Momo. So like a rival girl gang, basically. Um, and I've actually mentioned, or I've actually created, or I've explored the character design for that frenemy already, but uh, I, I don't want to reveal it because I want I don't want to like give anyone um, ideas for if they want to do their own character design first. Uh, you mentioned having plans to make more zines. Can you please make one for the Tinaverse slash Wonderverse OCs mayhaps? Oh my god, I never considered that, but I'm so flattered that you would be interested in something like that. So I never, yeah, I really never thought of that. So. Uh, now you're you got my gears turning um, on ideas. I actually really like that idea. I think that'd be really fun. And actually, I think if I you know keep that in mind, maybe I can actually start exploring like slightly more narrative stuff with the original characters. Like again, I, I don't I don't think I have the capacity to um, do like full blown comics or anything like that, but. I do like the idea of doing like freight, like fake screen caps for them. So like you get little pieces of a narrative maybe. I think that could be really cool. Um, why did I instantly uh, think of ideas for Momo villain? <laughs> I wonder how Momo, Mimi, and Kiki meet. Hmm, yes. Um, yes, yes. So many possibilities. Um, anyway, this was so much fun. Um, how? Ta-da. Wow. Yes, oh my god, imagine fake anime screen caps for the Momo biker gang with Mimi. Mimi. Yes, exactly, exactly. That's exactly what I was thinking. I don't know if you guys are familiar with um, Hannah. What is their, what is their handle? Um, Hannah. Like obviously my art style is different from theirs, but they do, yeah, Hannah, Hannah V. Barra, they do like retro looking anime screen caps of like content and it's so much fun. This is one they did for um, the Wednesday Addams TV show. You can see my, my light in the reflection. Um, but that's like, that's what came to mind is like creating like little snippets, like little screen caps. Um, of my own like character. So it's like, there's like hints of a story, but not necessarily like, committing to a full story. I imagine them in the My Hero Academia scene with Bakugo, Kiri, and Kaminari in the car. <laughs> Cute, aw. I haven't watched My Hero Academia in ages. I should watch that again soon. Or like catch up with uh, the series. Um, I feel like they would either meet via like an enemy of my enemy is my friend trope that becomes girl supporting girls or something deceptively wholesome like a book club or something. <laughs> I will have to, you know what's a common place that people become friends? In the bathroom. When someone's like, oh my god, do you have a pad, a tampon that I can use? They like, you know, friends, friends because uh, girls make friends in the bathroom very easily. Um, which, by the way, speaking of zines, I have, have, I mentioned this in my recent video, um, but I actually do have an idea for an upcoming zine, which will be in a year long project, 
But so for those of you who are patrons of mine, you'll know that for my Patreon page, I always just do like random themes. Um, but I'm planning to for next year to do a Zodiac portrait series. So every single month will correspond to like the, the dominant Zodiac. So I'll start with um, so January will be is that Aquarius? It's January Aquarius and then Pisces and then so on and so forth. So then by the end of the year, I'll have the entire Zodiac and then we can make it into a calendar or a zine or something. And then, yeah, it'll be fun for patrons to like jump in. Um, you know, if you want to collect the whole, the whole year, or if you just want to like pop in and grab your own month, um, or Zodiac or whatever. So that is like a really exciting project that I'm looking forward to doing for, for Patreon. Cause I've never, yeah, I've just never made it a whole arcing theme. So, um, Ooh, Leo here. I'm so excited. Tina, thank you for the company. My shift is almost over weekend. Oh my God. Enjoy your weekend. Yes. Um, tarot cards, not tarot cards for now, but I think, um, they'll probably have like a little bit of a tarot. Maybe they'll have uh i haven't i haven't figured out exactly what the full aesthetic is gonna be just yet but i should actually figure that out very soon um i love how capricorns can hide easily because everyone forgets about them i have an i have a capricorn friend i know that it is capricorn season s wait capricorn season has it started or is it next um Wait, it must be next. Right now is Sagittarius. Yeah. Um, so Capricorn will be last because um, I'm going to start with Aquarius and then we'll... Right? I think so. <laughs> January. Ah, I guess. Okay. Because my friend is a late December Capricorn. I think that's why I got confused. Yes. I guess maybe I should start with Capricorn. If Capricorn is the majority. <laughs> Even though someone's just like, ah, yes, Aquarius first, but maybe you're right. Maybe Capricorn should be first. Um, Cause yeah, cause Aquarius is mostly, yeah, Capricorn, December 21st to January 20th. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, you're right. I think <laughs> maybe I should start with Capricorn first and then do Aquarius and then Pisces. And I got confused because my friend who's a Pisces is a late February Pisces. <laughs> oh, what about incorporating constellations and hide the month's constellation in the art piece? Ooh, I like that. Yeah, constellations would be really good, like celestial. I'm actually, so um, I did a Zodiac warrior series like a few years ago and so I did a lot of research on like various things um relating to the zodiac signs but I will probably crowdsource some more ideas from you guys um I was thinking of actually making a post on patreon just to like get everyone's like input on what they what like certain things they really resonate with like for their certain signs so I will probably do that at some point as well um, soon actually very soon because like literally next month is it's gonna start so the year by went so fast but yeah so that's something to look forward to for that um, I'm gonna put the lid on my paint palette here because I'm done with that Oop. and um, yeah so that was what we worked on today. So much fun. Thank you again to Danny. I don't know if they'll ever see this, but thank you again to Danny for sending me this handmade watercolor paper. And just as a friendly reminder, my custom paintbrush set is finally out. Um, it's 1 a.m. and I need nutrition. See y'all soon. Bye. I'm actually gonna wrap up. So get get your nutrition. Um, doing algebra two right now. Anyone want to do it for me? I would not be good. Um, would not be good for that. Uh, are you gonna go back to your old zodiac drawings for inspo? I think I will. I probably like I won't. Um, at first I thought about like making the characters the same. Um, or like, but I don't know, 
I don't know if I want to like limit myself too much, but I definitely will still look at them for inspo. Um, I wish I kept one of the zines, but I didn't actually. Uh, I have the files obviously, so it'll be fine. But yes, that's, um, I will definitely still look f at them for, for inspo, probably like color palette and like certain elements that I've included. Cause you know, I already did the research, so. Um, congrats on the beautiful brushes, Tina. This was fun. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining. Uh, thanks for the live. It was fun. Congratulations on your brushes again. Thanks so much, everyone. I'm so happy to hear that they, people are buying them and I really, really hope that everyone enjoys them. And, uh, this live was so fun. I can't believe how long we've been, this is the longest, this is, this is the longest stream I've ever done. Um, so I do believe it is time for me to log off and rest my voice because I've been talking a lot about uh, Jazz Guy. Um, <laughs> and I'm gonna watch Blue Samurai because Chanel highly recommend and I, I, uh, I've been meaning to watch it anyway. And I'll eat dinner, that's important. So we are, where are we? Okay, I, I would like to do, I think I'll try to do another stream this month because I do think that it would be good to do another, uh, what's it called? Face, uh, uh, monthly favorites stream since there's only going to be two more left, uh, December, I mean, November and then December. So yes, I will let you guys know when that will be. Um, and look forward to a couple more videos. Uh, I, my brain cells are, are malfunctioning. Thank you so much for kicking my weekend off with the funnest live stream I've ever participated in. Congrats on your brushes. Yay. Amazing stream. Enjoyed all the stories and character creating and chaos. Yes. Oh my God. I can't believe we like named my characters and we've built a whole universe for them. It's amazing. Um, I love that. Kiki and Mimi. Adorable. Adorable names. Adorable. Um, so freaking cute. Kiki, Mimi, and Momo, like, shut up. That is the cutest thing. Um, thanks, Tina. I really enjoyed myself. 84 sold. Yay! Drinking Christmas dream, but only if you feel like it. Oh, you're right. Oh my God. Yes. Actually, okay. Maybe that's, if not Christmas, I'll try and like maybe Christmas Eve or like Boxing Day or something. Well, I'm gonna make it happen. I can, I can do that. I can do that. I'm not obligated to do anything else. Um, <laughs> Okay, thank you so much guys. You are all amazing. I hope you have an amazing day or evening wherever you're at. Um, I have, yeah, th like three new videos out basically from the past like two weeks. So if you haven't seen them yet, they're up. Thanks so much everyone for grabbing the brushes and for hanging out. And I will see you, I feel like a YouTuber. <laughs> we'll see you in the next one. <laughs> okay, goodbye friends. I love you all. <laughs>